Oh, right, right, right. What the heck is going on, everybody? We've got Rainer in the top right side of this match. It's a big one. It's Basilisk Esports, or just Basilisk, sorry, being represented by Rainer in the top right. A laser representing Team Liquid in the bottom left. And we're in yet another best of seven World Team League match in the playoffs. Team Liquid has been carried by the massive skill of uh, young Clement, the reigning Atlanta champion. And uh, they've also got, of course, Cure and Eliza, who have been doing some good matches as well. But yeah, Clem really has kept them uh, alive in many scenarios so far. And uh, of course, having that revive potential is huge. But now they face their biggest match. <laughs> You're going to face a team with Serral and Rainer on the same team. Now, I'd normally say that's just not fair. you gotta, you got to beat both of them and one of them revived. Like, even with a revival for your own team, that's so rough. But a laser is a ZVZ expert, and I actually think he's very powerful in the matchup. He hasn't popped off lately. Some people would say that means his chances are lower. I'd say it's higher because a laser, he pops off once in a while, and uh, if he hasn't done it in a while, I almost feel like his chances are higher. He's going to go for that quick third base here. Is it 400 minerals? There we go. It does go down. And uh, Rainer a little slower on his one. Looks like Rainer's actually going to be mining gas. Now, Rainer went 15-15, keep in mind. So he's gone for the very early queens. Single worker mining gas. He does like this build. I always wonder, is it really worth getting the gas this early? Because you have to kill a drone to build the extractor. Wouldn't it be better to have that drone mining down here and then take the gas a little later and get a few workers on it? I'm probably splitting hairs here, but it is just a, an interesting thing, the way Rainer's come up with his own version of the 15-15. Drops his own nice, fast third hatchery behind it. So far, though, he's trailing on drones. But, of course, his injects are already up. His queens are already out. You can see the queens have not popped yet for a laser. And, uh, well, I've just popped, I should say. <laughs> About 10 second delay on those lava injects. But does Rainer actually have the money to use these lava injects? And also, why has he got a drone just chilling there? Interesting. There we go. It does fix that up. So, as the lava injects pop, notice there's about 150 minerals. He's got a lot of idle lava. Puts a creep tumor down. Notice the creep tumor is not in the front because he doesn't want to block an emergency wall off that he might have to go for. And he's up a couple of workers. But as I say that, a laser's doing a really good job of actually outpacing him on the work account. And I actually think a laser's opening may be better. I mean, not even maybe. I think at this point, it's it's not up for debate. <laughs> a laser had a 16 hatchery build where he has a little bit more mining at the start. And because Rainer's just ended up taking a third and taking gas, the 15 hatch 15 pool is objectively worse in this scenario. So I don't think 12 pool's really a threat on this map. I'm going to make a statement. I know you guys don't like... Some people don't like when I do that. Rainer's build, in terms of the opening is suboptimal for this map. Other maps, I think it's quite good. On this map, this strategy, suboptimal. It's, uh, Elaze's build is simply better. Because you, you, if you're taking a third and a gas, you don't have enough minerals to instantly spend your lava injects, which means the advantage of the early queens gets completely negated. And therefore, you're better off with a 16 hatchery build like Elaze did. And uh, having the early drones, the early two extra drones mining, rather than speeding up the hatchery in the pool, is actually more worthwhile. So Elaze's got a small worker lead. This is not game winning. It's still going to come down to the strategy and the execution from here. But having a good start is something that you always want to see as an Elaze fan. Elaze is very good at getting ahead and then swamping his opponents in the mid game. Chat says they're going to veto that. No more statements, please. Only jokes about genitalia. No worries, guys. I got your back. Remember, this is PG-13 channel now. So we, uh, we hint at those jokes. I don't say them explicitly. In your imagination, it's very much an R-rated stream, but uh, if you only listen to what I say, it is thankfully a little bit more PG. Are we doing no Evo Chamber? Oh, Elaze's doing his famous no Evo Chamber build, guys. And he stopped at 55 workers. Oh, this Overseer is important. Rainer comes in, he's gonna see. Oh, that is not enough drones. Okay, guys, look at Rainer's camera. So we're on Rainer's camera right now. Rainer needs to basically just mass roaches. He stopped at 68. I'm surprised he's not building a spine crawler. There's a Nidus Worm on the way behind this as well. Nidus Worm is so good on this map. Ooh, I mean, Rainer is droning, uh, building roaches, but he's up 14 workers and he's going for Overlord speed. He's not cancelling any of it. Let's go back to everyone's camera. Overseer on the left that he does damage to. There's an Overlord there as well. He pokes in here. He sees the Nidus Worm and that Spine Crawler finally goes down. Very greedy for him. That's kind of cute though. I like the Spine Crawler on the backside. Very hard to push the front on this map. 
A laser starts droning behind this, cancels his Nidus, makes an Evo Chamber. That means he needs to drone and make a fourth base as well. A laser is not in a great position. I mean, he can maybe make something of this, but of course, being down a full upgrade with Rainer seeing it and now backing out of the plan, it does feel like a very suboptimal position. Fourth base will go down on that left side. First Evo Chamber coming down. Uh, I wonder if a laser goes Mutalisks here. Mutalisks is a way to delay any sort of big Roach counter push and get to the later stages. On this map, though, I actually think just going straight up to Lurkers and Hive is probably the better option. Roach has run forward, and uh, Roach Speed already finishes, transfuses on that as well. And Rainer, happy to move out and fight this. He says, hey, you don't even have that many units. I can fight this just fine, man, with Defender's Advantage. Plus two range has already started. So many drones building for a laser. And you know what? How far behind was he on income that whole time? Well... Ooh, 700 minerals a minute at its peak. That is quite a lot. I guess part of that was gas income as well. Laser has a massive gas bank. Infestation pit is there. Overseer comes in right now. Rainer doesn't want to be losing that Overseer. Kind of interesting. We've had a lot of mirror matchups to start these series. I do wonder if there's people who, who are, are kind of getting bored from the TVTs and ZVZs and tuning out early in these videos. I hope not, because every single series we've cast from the WTL playoffs so far has turned into an absolute banger. Now, to be fair, the TVTs that we've started with have also been very exciting. This game's been a little bit more slower uh, to, to start. And I mean, it's Rad who set station, so it's it's the slow map. Oh, Rainer comes in. He's already freaking so far ahead on the upgrades. He goops the plus one. Hive and Hydrogen are on the way. And I, I don't think, with, with a laser looking very unconfident against Dark in the late game recently, I am worried for him. Rainer is only on 67 workers, but he's been on that work account the whole game. He's got plus two, one finishing in a minute. He's going to push before that even kicks in and just say, well, a single upgrade advantage is as good as anything. He's up in the roach count right now as well. But it's such a long push path across this map. By the time you get there, a laser has a lot of time to get some defense together. Unfortunately for him, he's supply blocked right now. Missing that last 16 supply. Eight more roaches are in production. Good positioning, though, by a laser. Pushing into that for Rainer will be a big mistake if he fully commits. He's poking in and out. Oh, God. He realizes that concave is a deadly, deadly position. Infestation pits on the way for Rainer. Hive is already about halfway done for a laser. Does need to start a lurker den behind this. For now, though, 69 workers for a laser. No ca Oh, he's got a seventh gas, but no eighth gas just yet. Roaches and ravages for Rainer. Good positioning. Finds a decent angle on the right side. But a laser reassembles the concave. Nice old position micro for him as well. Biles on both sides, pushing the other player back. Looks like a queen or something got picked off in the north. Lurker Den finally going down for a laser. Both sides are trading reasonably evenly. Uh, Rainer is ahead in that trading, but we'll see where it goes. Knowing that the hive isn't finished, got to give a laser a little bit of calm. He realized he's just got to hang on for now. But Rainer's been taking some positive trades, using his micro and positioning to take fights uh, to his favor. He may now be overcommitting, though. A laser's holding on like a bloody champ, holding his own. After the way a laser crumbled in one of his recent ZBZs, I wasn't expecting him to fight quite so well, but as I say that, might be calling things a bit too early. Oh, he's going to lose his fourth, isn't he? Rain is going to get the fourth base. No, he's not. He's not got the fourth. He's just baiting a laser into bad fights by trying to get him to defend it. Oh, genius moves by Rainer. Rainer finally biles that fourth base, but he's already jumping on top. And I did not think this was a map where you could kill someone with a frontal roach timing, but that 2-1 upgrade difference really is a massive difference maker, isn't it? You can see it in the unit's lost tab. 1,400 resource advantage despite the defender's advantage. The poop on the plus one was legendary for Rainer. Really set him up for this trading. And now he's got a hive up behind it. He's got drones coming out a little bit. A few more gases on the fourth. And his own plus three range, plus two carapace starts up. Nidus Worm on the way right now for a laser. That's a desperation Nidus Worm, I think. Uh, he's got a Lurker down and a Lurker upgrade on the way, but only three base gas. Roaches do move forward for a laser. Feels he's got the numbers advantage right here. The upgrade advantage is so deadly, though. His roaches just suck. Yeah, the no Evo Chamber style is really cute, and I actually like it on smaller maps. But on this map, because it's such an easy to defend map and relatively easy to scout these mineral lines because they're so exposed, you can just fly in to any of these bases. There's no way to deny the scouting on how many workers you have. So I think maybe if a laser sent a bunch of workers out of his main to fully saturate his third and natural to really sell the story, maybe he could have made this work. But that combined with his Nidus Worm getting scouted meant that Rainer was just a bit too good here. Rainer takes the first map. All right, all right, let's go game two. Rainer taking Basilisk up 1-0.
now fighting uh, not to get a 2-0. Remember, if he wins this game, all he does is deny a laser his point, and he gets to stay in to verse the next opponent. So going for a 15, hatchery 15 pool, as is a laser. So they're, they're both basically doing the, this is incredibly safe against 12 pool builds because their spawning pool will be up a good 10, 12 seconds faster. And uh, they also can use this to explode out lots of drones, saturate their bases and go from there. Curious to see if either side turns it into a two base timing. The uh, progenitor of this build, Eric, the Brazilian beast, uh, always said, you know, I think it's really good for any two base aggression. And uh, I think that analysis was spot on. Uh, anytime you want to flood units off two base, having those injects 12 seconds early really helps you out. But if you're taking a third and you're taking link speed, usually doesn't see so many advantages. I, I often feel the only reason to do the 15-15 in those games is to, say, stop a pylon block. If a pylon's going to block you, then it's a nice to get the hatchery down a little bit earlier. Gas goes down at identical moments for both players. So this is a very mineral-focused build. You can see here Rainer already going to the natural, whereas a laser tries to mine one or two trips in the main before sending it down to the natural a few seconds later. How many workers are we both going to put on gas? Rainer, we know he's just going to put one on gas. Is he even going to rally that one? Yeah, he's going to put that worker on gas. Whereas a laser, three on gas immediately. Okay. So a laser is going to be down on minerals, but he's going to have a quicker ling speed or lair, depending on what he chooses to go for. Overlord starting up at identical times for both players. I can't wait to see what goes on here. The last game was a boring map. This is not that. If you were thinking, oh man, ZVZ is so boring now. No, that's Rad who set ZVZ. It's the biggest map in the pool, the most turtly map in the pool. This map is Oceanborn. It's a short to medium rush distance across the map. You've got wide ramps. There's no high ground here. Third base is wide open. There's plenty of attack avenues. And we see this map finished with Ling Bane or Roach Ling Bane aggression very often. Ling speed into third queen. He's going to look for an overlord snipe. Let's see how quick Rainer is to react. Well, his overlord's far enough back that I guess the laser said, no, no, let's do two injects or an inject and a creep tumor. And only then will I move out looking for these overlords. Trying to make sure he's denying the scouting. Third hatchery on the way with no link speed. Rainer. Mate, there's greed. And then there's whatever you're doing, buddy. I guess, it, does he know it's a 15 hatchery, 15 pool? And if so, does he know that just from the creep spread? Yeah, he probably knows it just from the creep spread. I think just from seeing how early the creep was out, he realizes the hatchery was up 10 seconds early. So Rain has made the read. Oh, you're going 15, 15. Players normally skip link speed. I could be greedy and take a third. Little does he realize this is mass zergling for a laser. And the moment link speed finishes, a laser is going to be flooding out. Unfortunately, a laser does hit a slight supply block here, but he doesn't have any lava available. So that's actually fine. His overlords will pop. At the exact same moment, overlords are popping out as his lava injects pop. Beautiful timings here for a laser. Rainer sees no third base. Rainer has not started many zerglings. He's only got eight building against 36 zerglings for a laser. He needs to wall off and give up his third base. Now, a laser is not going to show it until the third base is finished. Even though Ling Speed, okay, so Ling Speed is finishing, but he's letting the third hatchery finish so it can't get cancelled. A laser lets the third finish, even though Link Speed was done. Baits Rainer into letting that finish. Rainer has to Evo wall this right now. These queens need to get inside. What are we doing? Mate, mate. Rainer, Rainer, you need to defend the wall, not your third, bro. Dude, get inside the choke point. Oh my god, he fixes it, but a little bit late. Okay, he's got just enough units there with the drones helping out. He's going to try and fight in the open. Uh-oh. Oh, a laser's going to punish him for that hardcore. Oh, but you know what? Queens are very good units. And if a laser doesn't get the third, no way. Oh, Rainer, great judgment. Man, he was already building Zerglings before he saw what was happening. Okay, so he just barely has enough to defend. He even gets an Overlord there. Overall, not bad. Only loses three drones. Units lost tab is bad for him in the units lost, but as long as your third hatchery is still alive, I think that's fine. Uh, you're now only behind six Zerglings. Roaches are starting to build. Once again, no Evo Chamber for a laser. A laser likes going for a delay on those upgrades. He's building more Zerglings of his own as well. Lings are going to go into his main base. Good spready on the Lings though. And oh, oh, he distracts with those Lings, but a laser quick to notice. Rainer tried to do a bit of a trick there, but it's actually these three Lings that will go down. Oh, he doesn't lose any drones though, dude. A laser handling Rainer's trick so well. Oh my God, look at the units lost tab, guys. Better than two to one trading. He tried to do the bait, but it doesn't work. Spire's on the way as well. Oh, I love the Spire. And he's even shown a few roaches to Rainer. So Rainer's 
probably going to be thinking even more like, oh yeah, this is probably a Roach game, right? You got the Roach Warren, you normally play no Evo Chamber. He does not realize it's a swap into Mutalisks. Rainer is ahead in the work account right now. That is a lot of Zerglings. 37 Zerglings coming in. Rainer has to emergency wall off by popping an Evo Chamber down. Ooh. Chat pointing out ZVZ uh, best, best of seven. This is not a best of seven ZVZ, guys. This is a team league. This is the final map between a laser and Rainer. If Rainer wins this map, he stays in for the next opponent. If a laser can win it, then it's going to be tied up one to one, and both teams will have to put in a new player. Let's see what happens. The Overlord Highway. Guys, that was a fake out. He just dropped creep out of his overlords to pretend he was roach pushing. Rainer, with, well, you could see Rainer go, oh crap, start building roaches. But now he's going to get in and see that spire, and he's going to feel his heart sink. He sees the Spire. Rainer is going to go, oh, are you kidding me, mate? Now, does he push? What does Rainer do? We're on Rainer's camera. He's building more roaches right now. Is he going to Is he gonna push? Because he's not going to be able to do it in time. Muters will be out before Roach Speed finishes. Unless he pushes right this second, he can't push. He's building Lings. Guys, I, I don't know if he realized. The Muters are already on the way. There's eight Muters are on the way. He's going to drop his own Poo Highway to speed up his units in the counterattack. Here we go. Rainer's going for it. Now, there are very few roaches in the defense, but nine Mutalisks for a laser on the way. Those are going to be popping out as the roaches arrive on this side of the map. Roach speed 10, 15 seconds away. Ling's rallying in behind it. It's a big army advantage right now for Jack Frost, a.k.a. Rainer. Ling's are going to counterattack. Drones are going to evacuate that base. I love this choice to run across the map with those drones to the corner. He's walled off his natural to try and buy some time. The Evo Chamber will go down. Roaches, Lings, and Muters doing what they can. The Lings are going to counterattack. Great defensive micro here by Rainer, though. Those Lings are not getting the value they would have if they were at home. They kill a few drones. But is that enough? He's going to lose a lot of workers of his own. There's Roaches in the main. There are drones trying to evacuate all over the shop. The Muters will eventually clean it up. But his drones need to run to the third. He's actually delivering drones to the Roach Meat Grinder right now. The Lings did not find the damage on the counterattack. They would have been better served on the defense, but he thought, well, Rainer's got plus one range. The Roaches two-shot Zerglings. I don't want to get my Zerglings chewed up by those Roaches. And you know what? At the end of the day, only losing 12 workers is way better than I thought he would do. I thought he'd lose a lot more than that. I still think this is fine for a laser because Mutalisks are so clutch. And uh, luckily, there's a good Roach squad defending for Rainer. So he can defend the Zergling counterattack. He's got seven Queens. He has up 10 workers, which... That should be enough to reset this game. It's all about the value these nine Mutalists can give because every Spore Crawler, you've got to kill a drone to get that. You know, that's not ideal. These Lings run in. They, they do run out. Carapace is on the way for Rainer. Carapace, a very important upgrade for blocking the Mutalisk damage. And look at that. Saves one of those uh, Overlords. Nicely done. Mutalisks thinking about going in after some damage. Not going to go for it, though. There is only one Queen at home. The Overseer is going to scout. Is he sending the Mutas home for that? Not worth it. Mutalist is going to keep looking for a bit of damage on the front. Back up to 62 workers is a laser, which is exactly what you want to do. And it looks like a Roach Hydra timing. So the question for me is, does a laser go Mass Roach now? If he does, I think he can do fine. But if he tries to go Ling Bane, he needs that Bane Ling Nest and that Bane Speed started quick fast. And he can definitely get some damage if he just pulls back the weak Mutalisks. But a laser's been a bit kind of overly careful with his mutalisks i gotta say and he flies into the queens a little oh get out of there loses one mutalisk and he doesn't want to get too stuck in the back of the base and then get pushed by something uh did he see the hydrogen yeah he saw the hydrogen so i think he can assume what's happening he sees it's a lair no hive on the way or anything like that gets one drone with the bounce damage not bad gets himself an overlord as well Roaches are being built along with plus one range. Roach speed is not started though, and that is a very important upgrade. If you don't have roach speed, your roaches are going to suck. There's already 10 hydras out, 23 roaches, two ravages. A laser's overdrone. He's on 71 workers. He's going way too high on the workers, and he's got a lot of overlords on the map. I think Rainer can kill him with this roach hydra timing. Rainer getting a 2 0 would be a fantastic way to start this series off. Because remember, we've got several, we've got trigger waiting for Basilisk in the wings. And, uh, uh, you know, you, you really want a laser to be able to try and steal some maps here wherever he can, but it's going to be tough against a guy like Rainer. Rainer coming in with a giant army advantage. Mutalisks are going to be worthless against that Hydra count. That's too many Hydras. 1-1 one, one upgrades against 0-0. Zero, zero, no Roach Speed. A laser cannot defend it. And does get taken down. GG. Well played. All right, all right, all right, guys. We're going into the next one, and Team Liquid is sending out Cure. I, I, this is interesting because QR has very good matches against Zerg players. Um, problem, he doesn't beat them. 
He had a good close match against Rainer, I believe, in the grand finals of, uh, what is it called? Gamers 8? Last year? However, he he has looked helpless versus, like, Dark recently, for instance. Like, Cure, I, I honestly feel like you'd need to give me, I don't know, 15 to 1 odds for me to bet on Cure against Dark, for instance. Um, I don't know if Rainer has that same, you know, killer instinct that Dark does to take down Cure, but... I don't know. Rainer, Rainer is a very similar player to Dark, in my opinion. Now, just keep in mind, guys, Rainer did eliminate the previous player, um, a laser, and kept his own life alive. So he's denied them getting a point, got a point for himself. It's always, you know, it's a set of two games between each two players. Remember, guys, it's it's a best, you know, it's a two maps between each each kind of face-off of players with the format. And you've got a potential of one point you can earn for your team in those two matches. But denying your opponent's points just as important. Command Center does go down on the natural. Reaper's out. It's going to be a pretty standard-looking opening for Cure. The problem I find with Cure is it feels his multitasking cannot keep up with the Clems and the Rainers of this world. Um, especially in, in, in ZVT. I mean, in TVT, he can. He can get with Clem, sorry. But in ZVT, it's a very mechanical matchup. And a guy like Rainer, if he forces Cure to multitask, sends Banelings in all the mineral lands, that could be big. Uh, big thank you, Yacht Super, there for the sub. Sorry, guys. We'll give you guys some crops in chat in a little bit. Thank you very much. Gets a Spore Crawler trick, which is damage. Now, notice it's a very quick third hatchery. Rain is doing his single worker on gas. I, I agree with this build. I think it's quite good. I really like this build from Rainer for this matchup because he delays link speed a very long time. And I think 15-15 is super okay with a fast third base only if you delay link speed a long time. If you try to squeeze link speed in, you don't have enough money to spend these two super early lava injects that you see are going to pop before the three minute mark. And even with this money, you can see he's still only got enough to build five drones straight away and he's going to have to tap it as he gets every 50 minerals to build extra drones. Reaper circling very nicely. Rain is quite distracted. He builds an overlord before tapping a few more drones and starting another queen. But overall, very solid macro. Now, Cure is going for a third command center. Rainer, definitely a big uh, favor here. This is, I think, the, the weakness we're seeing potentially with Team Liquid is if Team Liquid had a really top-tier Protoss player, I would say Protoss is Rainer's weakness right now. It's not like he's bad at the matchup, but it's just he's so good against Terran, and his ZVZ has been excellent over the last few months as well, so definitely a, a situation where I'm like, oh, it kind of, like, if you've got Rainer on point in this matchup... He is the best player in the world at Zerg vs. Terran. He's better than Serral. He's just not as consistent as Serral, you know, but he hits much higher peaks than Serral does, especially when it comes to raw mechanics. I can uh, Serral makes up for that uh, often with his strategic choices, you know, the builds he picks and all that sort of stuff. But we'll see what happens. Seven Roaches on the way. I like the pullback on these drones. Good Overlord positioning for Rainer. He's also got an Overlord in the back that's going to confirm the third command center. Alien Reaper unable to get any kills, and look at that. I see what you're doing. And he's going to see the, the Banshee tech on the way as well. There are two Marines, so they'll get the Overlord kill, but Rainer, he's already building extra Overlords. He should be well prepared for that. It's 4 minutes 30. Rainer already is on 45 workers and climbing higher. Overlord speed started up. That was a misclick. He instantly cancels it and does go for Lair. Natural is oversaturated. That's interesting. That's very interesting that he's not rallying to his third. Curious. I guess he's letting the third base saturate itself and he's just going to take the gases and evos back here with the excess workers. Not a bad, not a bad call. Aliens over on the top side, Banshee in the center. You've got to be very wary because the scary thing about Rainer is his queen split. He spreads out his queens and roaches, pushes you back, and his creep just gets wildly out of control if you give him any room to breathe. Liquid parting, people are suggesting in the Twitch chat. And uh, Eon Blue wisely has said, I'm not sure about they want to take that uh, that that risk on. He's a bit of a brand risk. And <laughs> they have really big sponsors. Team Liquid is a pretty vanilla team in terms of like the the, the personality. They don't pick up many rages. They're, they're usually very good sportsmen, very good image. <laughs> parting <laughs> is a streamer who just screams about ripping his opponent's uh, important things off uh, from their crotches. So... Um, I think it's all in good fun. I don't think he's actually toxic in any way, but yeah, I do agree with that assessment that he's definitely uh, not the standard Team Liquid player. It'd be cool if they did pick him up, though. Hatchery does get tickled, but not really damaged too much. Now, this is mech, guys. 
I, uh, I'm very excited to see how Mech plays out against Rainer. It's three factory double armory. I do like three CC Mech. I think it's quite a good build if you don't get surprised by a big uh, Roach Queen timing attack or something like that. Oh, you don't want to lose that Queen. No, he should have kept going straight there, I believe. He tried to block the Queens on the corner. Maybe if the Hellions turned and fought, they could have bought him a little bit of time or used the Reaper Grenade. But Link Speed's on the way behind this, as well as Melee Carapace for Rainer. So Rainer's happy to just play a few Roaches and then basically play Ling Bane. The problem is, Rainer is famous for not scouting. I have talked about this a long time. Rainer and Dark like to just control the map, and they often play with an assumption of what their opponent's doing. And as a result, they are a little vulnerable to being tricked. Now, they very rarely die from those tricks, but they can fall behind from them. They're so good at just kind of gathering uh, up a defense off the back of their micro and with a few more roaches and roach bait on the way, it looks pretty decent. I'm going to put this on Rainer's camera. Let's. This looks exactly like a normal follow-up, but he is building a few more roaches, which is good. Roaches, I mean, his, his build choice is so solid. I don't think he cares that much if it's mech. I don't know if it changes that much other than the fact that he'd want to go range upgrades rather than armor. Changelings are dropping on the top side. Infestation bit goes down. Baneling speed starts up as well. Hyperflight Rotors is almost complete. Two more factories. Fourth and fifth one on the way. Fourth command center building as well. Oh, man. Rainer is going to see a lot of Hellions up there. Banshee's in the south. He still hasn't realized that this is mech. Changelings coming in. He should find out soon. The fact that there's so many Hellions, it should be starting to dawn on him. And seeing no Marines, now we should realize Hive does start up. He's going to build a Spire. He's thinking about a potential air swap here. And now he knows for sure that it is Mac. Queen's coming over. So he's realizing, wait, you rebuilt some Banshees. What the hell? That's right. This is not just a few Banshees. This is a lot of Banshees coming in. Sporkrill is in a bit of an awkward spot. Drones will have to hide up there behind the Sporkrill if you don't want to lose too many of them. But there we go. Queens do come home to defend. Hellions in the south are defending. These roaches are going to try and surround them. It's uh, no way out for these Hellions. They're going to try and trade as best they can against the Zerglings. 1-1 one, one Lings up against about to be. There we go. 1-1 one, one Hellions. But good trade for the Lings. Those Hellions best at kiting, moving and shooting. Losing so many there. Pretty much for free. Not your favorite setup as a Cure fan. I do love Hyperflight Rotors Banshees, man. Mixed in with Mech, it's such a good army for dealing with, like, Swarm Hosts, or anytime Ravager Link Bane overextends. Like, if these Queens ever die, your Banshees can really go, go super ham. He's building Vikings, though, so he swapped off the Tech Lab, and he's going back in that direction. Interestingly, how many tanks are we at? Ten Siege Tanks. Fourth Command Center goes down to the right side. Three more Command Centers building. Q is going to try to play a proper later style. But Greatest Spy is already building Vipers, plus two melee, and a big, big army of Roach Ravager Zergling is out. A hundred drones for Rainer. He is rich as they come. And he's going to be looking to swarm, no doubt. The Urubu up here, no doubt, whispering sweet uh, whispers into that Marine's uh, eardrums. You can totally win with Mech Cure. You can totally do it. Get the Terran players excited. I think mech is a fantastic composition until you're playing the best zergs in the world, but the best zergs in the world have a way of dismantling it due to its lower pace. Whispering sweet whispers. Yep, some of my finest commentary I know, guys. Roach Ravager Ling Bane tries to roll in. He's just going to pick up the command center and run away. Good choice. Doesn't want to overcommit into the choke point. Creep outside the third base feels terrible for Cure. The Ravagers can start to pick off these Siege Tanks. Luckily, the Banshees can try and fight for space at least a little bit here. But Transfuse, man. Ghosts are being built. I love it. He's already into three racks. Ghost off just five factory. Fantastic play. I do want to see him get some armor upgrades for those Ghosts. Even attack upgrades does help them a fair bit as well. We've got two Banshees in the north coming in, finding an unsaturated base, looking for any drones. That's what they really want to deal with. Big attack in the south. Here come the Vipers. Blinding Cloud. First one does miss the Planetary, I think. But Baneling's going after the SCVs there. Tanks and Hellions trying to come south. Planetary will get taken out. There's no command center nearby to immediately replace that. The Ravager Ling Bane trading as best they can. And Rain is going to instantly remax. Feels like he has endless money. Command center does start rebuilding. 
And I imagine Kua's next move is to take this base and then this base on the bottom. I, I think this base up top is too far away, too hard to take. Uh, I like the Banshee's trying to get rid of the creep, but you've got to be careful. He's losing them all. Vikings try to come forward, but the Queens are going to push those back as well. Where are those Vipers? Three Vipers gathering energy behind this. More Lings, more Banes, plus three melee on the way. Adrenal Glands is already done. Banshee in the south side damaging the hatchery, but not really going to be killing anything. Mass Lang on the top finds tanks without any guards. Oh, no aliens, no ghosts really guarding them. And he does take out a bunch of siege tanks and a ghost. Well worth your Zerglings there. Fantastic trading for Raynor, who's only down 200 resources. He's on uh, six bases right now, up against a four base Terran. That's a lot of grape jam spilled on that map. That is correct. That is a lot of grape jam. I've never called creep, heard creep called that. I always call it purple Play-Doh. You know, kind of brownie purple Play-Doh. It's like uh, basically the Zerg, Abitha made a factory that, that grinds up grimaces and turns them into creep spread. Tanks and Elbats trying to defend the planetary in front of the orbital, trying to help out. The SCVs are in trouble. The Bailing's going ham. Oh God, get those SCVs out of there, man. If he can keep the planetary alive, I think it's okay. And he will keep that planetary alive. 16 workers go down. That was a pretty good trade for Cure. If Cure can take more of those, that'll be great. He's now 2,000 resources ahead almost. But he's got to rebuild the workers really quickly, which with seven command centers doesn't take very long. He rebuilds seven workers. He's still got those five factories, not to mention the ghosts building. Plus three vehicle weapons is on the way. Trying to clear some creep here. This is kind of the scary thing for him, is just how much creep there is and how much map vision, how easily he gets across the map. The aliens and the ghosts wrecking these Zerglings. Wow, that was nice. Rainer might start to get frustrated. I, th I honestly feel Rainer just needs to keep doing what he's doing. As long as he keep tra keeps trading like he's trading, Kua will never establish a fifth base. So you should just remax go again, remax go again. As long as Rainer keeps doing that, I don't think there's any way to lose because I just don't see Cure ever establishing that fifth base. However, if he takes his foot off the momentum, lets Cure get a bit more infrastructure, a few more wall offs of buildings, it's definitely possible. Mass tank here, he's going to move all these tanks on that high ground. Now, problem with the tanks on the high ground is Banelings can still blow up the planetary because your tanks are only reaching to like here. So they're a good fallback position, but they don't cover in front of the base. So you actually want an orbital here, is what I would argue. Let's see if Cure is uh, thinking the same thing as me. I think that would be a really good idea, but uh, we'll see what he goes for. Siege tank in the mineral line, that's really nice. Look at that coverage on that tank, that's really far forward. He's going to go for the forward planetary. With the libs and a few more tanks spread in front, this could be nice. But Rainer says, hey, you're focused on taking that. I bet you don't have much defense in the north. Smart choice by Rainer. Cure quickly responds. He moves his army up, but blinding clouds are good on the planetary. SCVs up there taking damage to the Banelings. Rainer's struggling, though, to micro it. The planetary does fall. Banelings go after the Hellbats. It means the SCVs are all alive to the north. Liberator takes two shots, but a few of those Ravagers get sniped. Great defense by Cure. Dude, Cure's on fire. Cure's now 5,000 resources ahead in the units lost. Rainer's army is running out of steam. He could have already hit him with Broodlords, but he's taken his time. He's now going to those Corruptors. Remember, he doesn't have Infestors, and there's four Vikings and nine Ghosts out. So the beginnings of anti-Broodlord tech is already there. Cure is fighting like an absolute beast. Uh, if Rainer also was dropping Lings in the main or Nidusing there... Attacking the south, attacking the north, doing this. I, I do think he could still overwhelm with the low-tier mobile army, but he's going Broodlords. What worries me about that is I'm not sure how much Raynor likes playing Broodlords. I know historically he is not a big fan of it. I think a few to break a position can be amazing, though. Nice. Biles coming down, gets rid of a Liberator, and a two Liberators in a Planetary. Great move. Nine Broodlords are morphing right now. I think Raynor, with so much bank, can definitely drop his work account to 80 get a little bit more army count up since he does have so much money. Liberators are coming in as well. Since Q is so turtled up, I'd love to see Raynor mining out these frontal bases, but check it out. Liberator Harass doing really well. Raynor reacting very slowly. Oh, he parasitic bombs the Banshee. That will take that out, thankfully, but dude, he just lost eight drones down here. All of his lava, nine, finally builds a spore crawler, but man, very slow response. Raynor is, it's so weird, the difference between early mid-game Raynor and then the moment you slow the, let the game down a certain amount, it's like Rainer just gets triggered. And I feel this really is like it's been Maru's win condition against Rainer for a long time. Is yeah, you can try to kill him in the early mid game. Sometimes you can get him. 
But, dude, what about in the late game? Because if you drag him to the late game, you're dragging him there kicking and screaming. He does not like being at this stage of the game. That being said, Broodlords could be a big problem. He's got a lot of queens there, though. EMPs on the, on the queens are necessary. But, oh my gosh, the snipes are massive. The command center did get taken down very quickly, though. Not uh, lifting off that command center. A bit of a mistake. Doesn't matter, though, if you snipe all the Broodlords and queens. I mean... Rainer just stuck his army to the meat grinder. Where's the infested Baneling? I, I don't know what he's doing here. Rainer's attack is sloppy as all hell. Very sloppy. Very sloppy attack for Rainer. This, I, I don't think Rainer's had a lot of practice against mech recently, maybe, and is coming up rusty. The Europeans haven't played mech for a long time. And, and finally, that Liberator in the south getting dealt with. Yes, most of these 22 kills are lava at this point. But uh, Rainer taking some, some odd fights right now. He's looking for an ambush. I mean, I love the angle. He doesn't have many units, though. Might not matter. If he can get rid of those tanks, that's a big pickoff. Thors are now being mixed in as well. Ooh, can he catch him? The Ghosts, remember, do not have any upgrades, which is a problem. There's also only plus two armor on the mech. Cure's upgrades not looking as great as they could. Also, Cure may have five orbitals. That's not ten orbitals. He is low on money. Rainer's bank's getting a little lower. I, I still think Rainer could just remax basic armies and, and, and flood the main and the north with Ling run buys. Like you can see there are openings. This south side as well. Yeah, Sensor Tower could see it and he could respond, but you could blow that planetary up and get out before he can do anything. Q is still in a fragile position. Oh, so many SCVs going down in that northern base. Nice Hellion splash though for Q, but 18 more SCVs. Not something he can really afford at this point. Even with two more orbitals coming in, Going up to seven orbitals is nice. Is it really enough? I'm... You know, 58 workers, he can still rebuild a big army, but Rainer's on 80 workers. Rainer has uh, 6k resources almost in the bank. Broodlord's ready to siege on the front. Now, he doesn't have many spellcasters. He's got one infester and his ground army's not nearby. But the Broodlord Queen does arrive. Queens cannot transfuse off creep. Keep that in mind. Hellions in the south being annoying. Command center lifts up. Good choice here. Now, Q has got... Five Thors, seven Ghosts, and two Vikings. He's going to try and defend that way. The Broodlords will pull back. Queens are going to try to get rid of those Vikings. Forcing that base to lift. Very effective. Cure is not maxed out right now. Q is struggling on the money front. I do think Reyna was ahead in the early mid-game of this map. I do think he had a lot of momentum. I'm surprised Q has been able to hang on this long. But there was a few promising engagements. He is ahead 9,000 resources in the units lost. If you can get another one of those fantastic engagements, it would be great. But Reyna with the Broodlord Queen is kind of keeping him off balance. And he's going to need to bring these Thors forward to fight it. Command Center does lift off again. If he can get those Thors arraigned in a big line, they could be powerful. Still no plus three armor, though, for those Thors. I'm surprised he's not fighting, guys. I actually think he could fight right now. He loses a Thor there, but Q is being a little pedantic. Oh, big attack in the north. That's why Ling Ravager comes in. Clears out that mineral line yet again. In the south, it looks like finally he's getting tired of it. He's just going to take the fight, and he can win this fight easily. There's no meat here. Thors will destroy this army. Banelings and Ravages as they come south do scare him back, though. Units lost tab once again is showing up at about 8,000 resource advantage. So Rain is starting to trade well while mining vastly more money. It's a huge problem for Cure. Cure needs to get rid of this army. He needs to get rid of it right now. He doesn't have much support. I think now that the ghosts are here, he will start dealing with it. But he's going to have to stand and fight at some point. And Rainer's trying to lure him to creep. He's trying to spam transfusers, land fungals, get the banelings on the ghost, get the ravages on the thors. And that's a very good way of doing it. If you've got any mods in the chat, if they could skip ad break, would appreciate that. Corruptor's coming forward. Fungal does go down. Here we go. Banelings rolling forwards. Thors are there right now, trying to spread through the army. The Thors take decent Baneling splash damage. As funny as that sounds, Vikings starting to clear the Broodlords. A good pullback and spread from Cure. A good fight, but is it a great fight? I would say no. It was a, it was definitely a good fight. He's back up to 9,000 resources advantage. He's going to take out another Ghost on the way out, which is great. Gets another Queen, clears some creep. But Rain has already got more Zerglings coming in. His Ling run buys have been so effective. And they are getting rid of tank after tank after tank. In that case, only one tank and damaging another. But of course, Cure needs more money. This base on the south has been a lifeline for Cure in this match. He's going to land an orbital there. Wouldn't mind him repairing that, just so it's a bit tankier. Now, Rainer, realizing this game is getting dragged out, is going to fully transfer to the northern base. I'd love to see him mine the gases out there as well and try to mine out this southern base because we've talked about this a lot. When the Terran is just in survival mode, by mining out the bases next to them, you starve them. Every mineral you mine is a mineral they don't get to use and it's a mineral you get to use. So you can kind of think of it as a double value mineral. 
So I always feel like, you know, if a gold base gives plus 40% mining, mining from these bases gives plus 100% in a late game turtle match. Something which we want to see Raynor take more advantage of. You can see if he doesn't mine it now, these tanks are going to encroach on his position. It does bile down one of the siege tanks. Corruptors in the main base have been doing some PPs up there, but it looks like... How many command centers have actually died this game? Three planetaries. I don't think he killed any orbitals. Looks like the orbital just lifted off. The ghosts are trying to hunt down those corruptors, which is a cute idea, but they're kind of far away right now. Oh, he tries to snipe the corruptors. Not going to quite be able to get it. He will take out the, the queen at least before backing away, afraid of the Ling Bane swarming him. South side Hellbats are going to deny here, and it's very important. If Kua can harass these two bases, stop Rainer from mining them, he can deny that plus 100% and, uh, and, and do what he can there. Hellbats trying to do what they can. Roach Ravager Baneling coming forward. The tank spread has been fantastic this game. Cure is really holding the line like a beast. And I told you guys you can't really keep up with the top Terran uh, Zergs and the multitasking lately. Uh, especially Dark has been kind of preying on him. I love that he's playing this style. I, I think it matches a slower, more methodical Terran style. But he's still doing it excellently and showing really fantastic positioning. Here comes the Ling Bane Ravager Viper Corruptor. Blinding Clouds on the tanks. Liberator's getting taken out by the Corruptors. The Command Center will have to lift. Up in the north, the Hellbats are going to go forward and take out that base. A few tanks going to try and attack down the south. They should be able to take out these Ravages pretty effectively. And it looks like they are going to be doing just that. Hatchery could get focused as well. Tanks even in tank mode. Not the worst units. Drone's starting to fall in the north as well. rain has got to be careful. He's going to lose a bunch of stuff here. It does bile down one of these siege tanks up north. Roach going to get a few vomits off before it gets too shot. A lot of drones falling. Rainer right now a little slow to react. Where is his answer to this? He's rebuilding his Vipers. But dude, Q has got equal mineral bank. I can't believe Q has done this. I, I really, I did not see this coming at all. I thought this would be a, a fantastic game for Rainer. But Q has made magic happen today. And you know what? Never upgraded his ghosts. Just 0-0 zero, ghosts. Zero They're just there for spellcasters for the most part, as well as some basic damage. And uh, turns out that was the more important thing. It was securing new bases. And he's actually going to take one of these middle bases, which Raynor didn't steal any of the resources from. He hasn't stolen that many from the northern base either. If you get the, the, the north, he gets the south, then you're just splitting the map. And we already know Terran is way more efficient than Zerg. 17,000 resources ahead. So Raynor is looking like he's basically on his last army or two. He has to get in the production and, and break in and, and, and do massive damage. You know, he has to find the Terran out of position and get a fantastic trade. If he can't do that, he will be in big trouble. Now, these two tanks on the low ground, they were left over from the run by. They're going to be dead in no time. Blinding Cloud does go down on those. Ghosts are up there with a spready of tanks. No Hellbats here, though, is a problem. The Lings are definitely causing issues. There are some more tanks and libs to the right side. Baneling's still going after those Ghosts. They're going to cloak and try to spread. Good spready on some of those Hellbats. Baneling still gets some pretty decent detonations. But, oh man, the Ravages and Roaches actually cause some trouble as well. Files do try to go down. Takes out a Hellbat. Not too bad. Rainer gets a pretty decent fight there. Still 16,000 resources behind. And he does not want to let the Terran mine out of this base. Remember, Cure does have a lot of minerals, but he's had this gas denied up here. That's 2,000 gas being denied from mining. This one here will run out pretty quickly as well. Gases on the south are almost fully mining with just one worker missing. Lings in the north going for a run by running through the libs could be great. I feel like the tank splash has been doing pretty well against these zerglings. Normally tanks pretty bad against zerglings, but this time around there's just too many. They break through the front lane of tank fire and do break in very smoothly. Ravager, Roach, a zergling. It's a basic army. It's not a long-term army, but trading against tanks usually pretty good. Hatchery comes down and blocks the command center from landing. Ambitious. I think he's got to break this wall and go to the production. I think he has to. The scan sees where his army station. Rainer, he's building more Broodlords. He's going to go for Broodlords again. I mean, there's only eight ghosts. There's no Thors. Broodlords could be game winners right now. This Broodlord wave could be a game winning move. Oh, but look at that. He's got tanks on the high ground. Overseer's there. He's trying to bile, but he has to pull back. Rainer has to pull back because the Broodlords are going to, of course, take a lot of attention. Parasitic bombs on these libs could deal with them eventually. He's going to have to do that eventually. There we go. Oh, he drops two. Okay, that's a bit overeager in my opinion. Corruptors could have dealt with it. Uh, tanks do get some shots off on the infestors, but they barely survive for now. And this is a huge push right now for Raynor. The Broodlords in the south finding a big impact. But the ghosts are here. It's time to pull back and get your ground army here supporting it. Overseers will get popped, as will these queens off creep. Q are getting some nice pickoffs. You got to be careful. Every bit of mineral is so valuable. And look at that. A Broodlord goes down. The Cocoon is available as well. Now, these ghosts used a lot of energy on Cloak. That's a bit of a mistake. 
Liberator's tanks and Hellions are building all at once right now. The Ravager Ling is still in the middle looking for the counterattack on the natural. He's got some tanks on the high ground covering his position. Looks like another command center just went down there as he's lost four planetaries this game. Not sure if that was one of those or something else. Liberators, tanks, Hellbats, and Ghosts trying to fight. There's not enough snipes to actually deal with the Broodlords. The Fungal comes forward, but dude, there's no support for the Broodlords other than a few Corruptors and a single Infestor, yet there's so little anti-air, it might not matter. The Ghosts are getting fungled. They're not really landing snipes here. And that's it. There's just nothing that shoots up. These Broodlords are going to win this game. There's nothing that shoots up. Uh, the Corruptors are killing the Liberators. All the tanks are getting broken. Oh, Q are just caught with no anti-air at the worst possible time. If he was building Vikings instead of Liberators, I think he could have done this. If he had, like, uh, a few Vikings there to kite the Corruptors into the Snipes, then maybe he could have held. But Q is, is taking massive damage, and he finds himself just being checkmated by the constant little waves of Broodlords. He's still got a big army, but Raynor has a giant army. Now, to be fair, Raynor's army is almost pure Zergling. There's, there's, there, there, there's few armies that are lower tier than that. Base in the top, completely undefended. He's going to send a few Hellbats up there to deal with it. Command Center in the south does not lift. It goes down. Broodlords take out the missile turret. They're taking out the repairing SCVs. The Corruptors could unzip their flies and go wee-wee, but no, it looks like they already used that on something else. Top base is going to be suffering big damage here. Rainer's economy finally being found by Cure. Anyone call for some barbecue? Tanks, Hellbats, Libs, and Ghosts trying to move south. And the Broodlords not quite able to take out the base, funnily enough. Oh. But man, just a small squad of Broodlord Corruptor causing so many issues for Cure here. And, and as much as Broodlords are very bad in certain situations, head-to-head head -head fighting Thors. <coughs> we saw how good they are versus tanks and how Terran often likes to have a very anti-ground focused army. That command center in the south is going to burn down as well. Oh, this is so unfortunate for Cure. He hung on for so long, he really pushed Raina to the limit here. But it is a, a rough one there. And uh, that is the way it goes. Oof, Corruptor, Broodlord, Ling Ravager coming forwards, trying to deal with this. The Broodlord's raining down death on these armies. And the Ling Ravager, oh, trying to fall back. But, you know, yeah, man, it's, it's, it's too much damage. There's just nothing left. It's a bunch of Hellbats and Ghosts. I mean, Lings are not going to do well versus that, I don't think. I don't think you can just headbutt that with your mass Zergling army, Rainer, but does it matter? He's winning the fight with a few Ravager Biles, two Broodlords, and a handful of Corruptors. The man is destroying with uh, a very, very kind of odd hodgepodge of Zerg units, but they're microed exceptionally well, and Rainer is doing fantastic. <clears throat> kind of surprising to see Rainer use Broodlords so effectively. Broodlords have always been so good against players that are heavy on tanks. You know, I've always said the rule is if a Terran is over 10 siege tanks, up at 12 plus especially, then a Broodlord swap is almost always called for in late game against Terran. But uh, Q is out of money. He's going to tap. He's, I mean, he's scanning. He's like, well, these bases are out. But I mean, this base is still mining on the bottom. I, I don't know how you could possibly come back from here unless you somehow nuke Reyna's army or something like that. Another command center is about to burn down up here. Corrupted shooting it down. And they do shoot it down. Hellback goes trying to hold the high ground. A single siege tank there. Ghost gets hit by a bile. He does technically survive, but it's Hellbats versus Roach Ravager. Siege tank gets sniped down by the bile, and the massling comes in once the Hellbats are gone. Thors, the ghosts, and even the planetary will get overwhelmed. That is enough Zerglings to overwhelm. GG, well played. Very nicely done. All right, all right, all right, guys. We got Cure in for another chance. Does he play mech again, or does he go bio? He's in the top left, and he's fighting. He can still get a point on the board here for Liquid and eliminate Rainer. If he doesn't, then that sucks, because if he can't do that... Sorry, guys, getting our scoreboard messed up. Uh, then, obviously, it'll still only be 2-0. Reyna can't possibly get another point. But if he eliminates a laser and cure and forces Clem out, oh, that's that's not a good start for Liquid. <laughs> I remember that, that the problem for Team Liquid here against Basilisk is you can revive Reyna. And then, if you get to the ace match, you can bring Serral back or, or vice versa. Whereas for Team Liquid, it's like, you can only... If you revive Clem, you can't use Clem in an ace match. You'll have to bring out Cure or a laser. And that's that's the advantage of having two god-tier players on your team. And Cure is a very, very good player. If he was playing against Terran or Protoss, I would put him up with the very best in the game. Unless he's playing Maru, I think he's like evenly matched with the best Terrans in the world. Maybe favored against quite a few of them. 
Protoss players, uh, he's absolutely like favored to beat the best Protoss players in the world as well. But it's just this matchup where Kira is severely weaker compared to his other matchups. It's the faster pace of the matchup. He's he's just not able to excel as mechanically as we talked about earlier. Now the SCV will go for a bit of a scout over here. It is a 15-15 opening once again for Rainer. But notice he does not have a gas. And he's building six lings. He was not hoping, he was hoping there was no SCV. So he could sneak out with six lings and do some damage. This is a very cute opening. But actually the SCV is going home. Oh, so he can sneak out with the lings. Okay, if the lings, as long as they don't get spotted by the SCV, this could be big. And the Reaper's going down the right side. Ling's going down the left. Yeah, he could get in there and try to deny this command center. You, That's actually big. This is a really cute opening for Rainer. He's going for a gas now behind it. Does slow down his droning a fair bit, though. Reaper comes in. Queen is there. Already injects the main. Injects his natural a little bit later. Wait, was this pool first? Was this not 15-15? Why are his queens at different times? I'm going to have to check this opening build order, guys. Oh, there are two Marines, but one of them goes down. Good micro so far. He only lost one Marine for three Zerglings. That's great micro. SCV hops on the command center. That SCV pulls back, and the Marine will gun it down. Nice defense here for Cure. Very well done. Third command center is on the way. And it looks like maybe this was like a 15 pool or something like that. Something weird for Rainer, but we'll, we'll check. It might just be that he didn't have enough money to start the queen or he started it slightly late on the natural. The queen was still very early on the natural, so it still felt like a 15-15. But uh, we'll see exactly what went on. Six Zerglings came in at a pretty nice time. Reaper rotating around. Gonna go down to the natural, but there's a queen waiting on the low ground as well. Getting hit from two sides. Ooh. He's dead. Gets a full scout there. Does he spot the roach horn though? And he does see it just barely. Can probably assume what's happening since he saw no link speed up in the main base. Third hatchery goes down on the triangle for Rainer. And he is going to be working his way forward on that economy. Second gas goes down for Cure. Looks like it's going to be a Hellion Liberator opening after the Viking most likely. If this is Q's weakest matchup, why didn't Team Liquid send out Clem? I think the reason is you've got Clem. I mean, who are you going to play? It's Rainer or Serral, two of the best Zergs in the world. So they must be thinking Q has a better chance of beating Rainer than he does against Serral. So we might as well put him out now. Clem's likely our best chance against both of these guys either way. So, we, we, But we, we've got to try to get some value out of these other players. And they maybe thought, you know, well, a laser might have a good chance against whoever they put out first, whether it be Trigger or Rainer unlikely to put they do put several out first sometimes but i'm not sure of the percentage of that and then um trying to trying to take advantage so it's always yeah it's kind of funny man because i feel like Serral and rainer basilisk is such a hard team to strategize against because you're just like well you got two of the best zergs i mean they're a little bit different but you basically just need some super amazing verse zerg play I mean, uh, Maru's team is very good. Maru, Solar, and Onside. It's 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 a, a close second there. And it's good they do have a variety of matchups. But I kind of imagine if a team had two Marus on it, that's basically basically what Basilisk is. They're like, we have Maru, and we have Maru 2.0 over here. And you're like, okay, this is very frustrating to play against. Second and third barracks, third and fourth gas. We should see double engineering bay in the near future. Drone count's looking pretty solid. Viking goes around there right now. Viking into Cloaked Banshee, in my opinion, is one of the weakest openings in the game. It is Bio, by the way, of course. So Hard Lead's a good map for Bio. I think it makes sense for Cure to go back to a more standard style on this map. Maybe do like a big 8 racks push. It's old school, but it can definitely work out. Viking up here in the main hasn't found anything after its first Overlord kill. And the Roaches are pushing back. Ling Speed is on the way. Going to swap back into the Ling Bane style. Hatchery on the right side goes down. That is a fifth base. How many gases? Guys, are we playing two gas right now? Rainer? He's oversaturated on this third. He's not taking extra gases yet. This is a bizarre setup. He's also semi-walling his base. Roaches are getting a Hellion or two in the middle. Nice. Bit sloppy from Cure. Banshees are so late, man. That being said, there's no lair. Oh, wait. Yes, there is. He's got a lair. Oh my. 
He's doing everything at once. 1-1 one, one upgrades and a layer and link speed. Well done. The Overseer hasn't morphed yet. I don't think he realizes his lair's finished. Rainer? Hello? Okay, that lair has been done for a long time. He finally does morph the Overseer. He's got an Overseer scout going in, so he definitely knew he was able to do that. Nice spore crawler placement. I'm in the fifth base up top. I, it's interesting. Q is not even tr trying to attack it, figuring there's no way I'll kill it. Ten more drones are on the way. Rain is in that greedy mode that he loves to do. Five roaches, nine queens, and 80 drones. The man is a savage. Infestation pits on the way, as well as that Banely nest. And a second factory goes down for Cure. I've got my eyes open for that fourth command center timing. That's what I'm most interested to find out. Should be Armory next. And then, uh, I mean, with the second factory, you're almost always going to go four bases. There is a very rare old school style where you go two factory tank and eight barracks on three base. It's a style that gasses out very hard, but it does have a, a very powerful three base push. Armory goes down behind it. Q is still clearing a little bit of creep, but not that much. Uh, that's, a, that's a really weird scan location. I mean, that creep was obviously way out to the left of there. But in the heat of the moment, you're managing 50,000 things as a player. It's, it's obvious if you look at it in isolation, but it's very understandable that mistakes happen in a StarCraft game because, you know, look at that APM tab in the top left and remember just how many little orders are being given at every moment. If you guys ever want to get an appreciation for that, watch the players' streams, watch their first person view any recordings from tournaments that have been posted and you will get a, a bit of an idea of just how much stuff is happening and how easy it is for slight mistakes to happen in the midst of that. Marines coming down the right side, starting to clear the creep. Oh, Marines going after the Ravagers. He's going to get rid of all of them. Good snipes there by Cure. He's going to go past this base in towards the main. Hive is on the way. 2-2 started. Roach speed is almost finished right now. Bailing speed is indeed done. 92 drones for Rainer. This man is rich. Oh my gosh. Nice hot pick up there. I, I feel like Rain is already in such a good position. Because, yeah, it's a good time to fourth command center. This thing started at 7 minutes 30. Like, that's a, that's a good timing. That's great. Banshee's doing harassment. He's not throwing many units away. He's only lost a few Marines, a Reaper, and two Hellions. Like, this is great. Great micro. Great play by Q. It's just the creep spread, despite that, is everywhere. It's all over the map. Rainer has an immense economy. He's building 11 more workers right now. He's building a lot of static which will limit the harassment opportunities, but it does, of course, chew up a lot of his uh, money as well. But Rainer is maxed out. He's got Vipers and Adrenal Glands on the way. No sign of any high attack. It's just, you know, a few Roaches and Ravages, and mostly Lingbane Viper. I would love to see a Hydroden uh, go down for Rainer in case he wants to go Lurkers, or... Yeah, I mean, maybe not a Hydroden. Maybe... I'm thinking, do, do we go Ultras? Probably Ultras, but uh, a Greatest Fire would actually be perfect. Especially when you take into account the uh, double factory guys. But actually, no, one, one factory's on a reactor. He's building Widow Mines. Widow Mines, very good versus Ling Bane. Very mobile style. A few Marines get in there, focus down a couple drones before they get surrounded. This drop lost a lot of its oomph. It's only six Marines and two damaged medevacs now. Fourth command center is going up. Ultra Cavern is going to be the choice for Rainer. Right there, nestled inside the main base. He's got his 6th base and 7th base on the way as well. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Pig's not good at counting. Shh. Oh, abducting the damaged medevac in. And he can leave these guys here. I mean, that's just wasted supply for cure. A damaged viking and damaged medevac. The queens on the left side are taking damage. Where is their overseer? It's not with them right now. Widow Mine does get taken out by some corrosive bile. Bit of a push coming forwards for cure. Cure is slightly supply blocked on 196. I don't know if that's the end of the world, though. Viper looks like it abducted those units as well. Two Banshees going to start to harass the sixth base. Oh, damn. Looks like that Widow Mine just killed 24 Zergling Baneling. Things do get a, a pretty decent wraparound in the Marauder tank, though, which is nice. That looks like these guys have pushed back the Banelings on that side. The Hatchery taking a lot of damage. Ling's unable to get economic trades. The units lost tab actually in favor of Raynor. Banelings get a hit on the Marines. A few Elbats get cleared up as well. Oh, he tries to bile down the Widow Mines. And Widow Mine on the right gets another hit as well. The Ling Bane trying to be remaxed right now. Vipers are here. Parasitic Bombs could be big on those Metavacs. That's what he's going to go for. There is so many Zerglings. Remember that Rainer has a crazy amount of production. Oh me, oh my. 
He doesn't build many macro hatcheries. Oh, nice Widow Mine shot there. Parasitic bombs all over the Metavax as well. Whoo. I did see someone commenting recently. They thought because there's not many macro hatcheries that Rainer is really, you know, has a big problem with his lava not being able to spend his money. But if you look at his supply, he's almost always permanently maxed in late game ZBT. So I'm yet to really see a moment where he slipped up on his injects or his production for even a moment. Widowmine does go down on the right side. Bio started stepping back here. Q has got to find some damage. The Ultras are now coming in as well. Parasitic bombs plus Widowmine splash. The Medivax are getting slaughtered. Rainer rolling into the bio with the Banelings. A few of those connecting on those Marines. The unit's lost tab is disgustingly close. Bio mine against Ling Bane Ravager should not be this close, but it's only a 700 resource advantage for Cure. Yes, he's getting a fifth base up front, trying to erect a planetary. These Banshees, I don't know why the Queens have not dealt with that yet. I, I really got to question where those Queens are and why do they, they don't bring an Overseer with them. Rainer has let them rain down for way too long. Widow Mines are getting some shots off. Looks like the Banshee's going to die without cloaking. Q is a bit too busy as well, thankfully for Rainer's sake. Widow Mine does get a bit of friendly fire on the Marines. Another Parasitic Bomb on the Metavax. You've got to be so quick at spreading those Metavax out. But even then, they try to come back into the clump. They always do that, and three Metavax go down for that Parasitic Bomb. We've already seen nine Metavax fall in this game. That is, of course, 1,800 resources, 900 minerals, 900 gas. Starts to stack up over time. Apparently, Rainer said on his live stream yesterday, the game's never over if they have Widow Mines. There's always a chance. <laughs> Spoken like a true Zerg. He's not wrong. Ooh, here we go. More parasitic bombs going down, though. Blinding Cloud on the planetary. The tank in the mineral line is in trouble, as are those SCVs. Oh, the Banelings. The Banelings with the boom booms. Planetary goes down, and Rainer is all over it. He just is so powerful. When he has an opening like this, where he's just smooth, in control from start to finish, um, even though his Ling pressure didn't do that much damage, he's just so good at putting on little bits of pressure, six Zergings at the start, spreads creep like a madman, plays a very late Ling speed, uh, with just a few roaches to cover him, takes an early fourth, an early fifth, and it's it's business as usual for Rainer. And the fact is, he just has so many more units than the Terran, so much more creep, so much more momentum. He's always taking fights where he wants to. He doesn't let the Terran get a perfect setup. Cure, he's a very good player. It's just that Rainer is so much more, uh, so much faster than anyone else. It's a big problem. And also, he didn't rally these barracks. That is an issue. This barracks poorly placed. He's actually got uh, six supply stuck, and another ten supply just stuck and uh, standing at the buildings idle. So that is a, an unfortunate mistake for Cure. He's got such a small army on the front line. He's got to be wondering where are my soldiers right now? Where are they? Widowmine's getting some decent smears on the Ling Bane. The Parasitic Bomb's killing all of the Metavax. The Banelings are all over, and Rainer takes out the Command Center on the right. The Orbital that's building goes down as well. Cure is dead in the water. He's got nowhere else to go. Rainer, of course, has a full base there, a new base in the bottom left. He's got mass Zerglings coming. He's building a few Overlords as his Overseers do keep dying, but Cure just can't, can't afford to hang on. Now, does he notice? He does rally to the front in F2s, but... Still that six supply stuck in behind the buildings, unfortunately. The pace of the creep, I, I gotta say, it's demotivating. If you're playing in Cure's shoes, every time you think, maybe I can get back, and then you realize creep is knocking on your door on every side of the map, the pace at which Rainer spreads creep, it forces you to do something to him. But he's so good at defending, you feel like attacking usually doesn't work out too well for me. So I want to macro up. But if I macro up, he's going to get 90% of the map covered in creep spread. So I kind of have to get out there and be active, but I also can't overcommit. It forces you to dance. Rainer's ability to spread creep forces his opponents to dance with him. And that is something nobody wants to do. Nobody wants to dance with Rainer in a macro Zerg versus Terran. Rainer now coming in from the left side. He needs to run the SCVs, lift the command center. They are trying to get out of there. He's going to rotate his units to the left side. The Marauders need to get up front. There are some decent Widow Mines here. Snipe's trying to go down on the Ultras. Nice micro for Cure this time. That's a pretty impressive micro. I like the positioning. Cure shut that attack down quite well. Despite it, he will take a lot of damage, including 16 SCVs on that base on the right. And uh, as impressive as the micro and positioning was for Cure, you can't be affording to lose 16 workers. You can't be affording anything like this. Units lost type is way too close to even. When you're facing a Zerg this rich, you need to be 5, 10,000 resources ahead already, if not more.
26 Banelings morphing. That's going to take it up to 39 Banelings, 77 Zerglings, 4 Ultras, and 3 Vipers. And I believe when those Banelings are done, we will see Raynor punching this command center into the ground. Not often you see people punching their opponents into the ground, but that is exactly what he's doing. Look at that. Here come the Xenos. Woo, the Dirty Zerg. Just rolling on in. The goddamn hive just sliding its way in. The swarm of Zerg just overwhelming. There is far too many, and Rainer does not care how efficient the trades are. He will simply spam more acid on your face than you can handle. Goes out the left and the right base at the same time. Cure is hanging in there, but he's on a heavy dose of copium. And we've got to already start thinking about the next match. This will give Basilisk the 2-0 this victory. And that means... That means uh, Mr. Clem has to come out. And Mr. Clem having to come out already. He's going to have to beat Rainer. 2-0. Beat Serral 2-0. And beat Trigger 2-0. <laughs> Well, actually, he could go 1 1 with Serral, right? If he 2 0 is Rainer, 2 0 is Trigger, and then goes 1 1 with Serral, they're back on even, right? That's doable. That's doable. It can happen. <laughs> it can happen. Uh, he can definitely. I mean, Clem's heavily favored versus Trigger. It's just 2 0 having to go 3 1 versus a mixture of Rainer and Serral is a, a very tough ask. Massling Bane attack coming in. He's looking for the finish here. It is Rainer. Fatigue is real as well. Cure may have tired Rainer out. Maybe Clem can come in fresh. Catch Rainer a little bit unfocused, maybe. They do have short breaks between the games, but not that long to fully refocus necessarily. Especially not being forced to play these long macro games. And game one especially was incredibly taxing. But uh, in this game, I think Rainer is like, dude, you have no economy. I can do whatever I want. These Banelings are just rolling. Rolling, rolling, rolling. We're rolling, rolling, rolling. And there we go. Rainer gets the victory. They're up to zero. Denies Cure from getting a point for Team Liquid and, of course, keeps his own life alive. It's going to be Rainer versus Clem in the next one. All right, guys, let's go. Rainer in the top left on a roll right now. But has he been exhausted from playing against Cure? Because now comes the big boy. The big guns from Team Liquid that have got them so far in a couple of incredibly close matches. Clem in the bottom right side playing a very standard one Rax expand, sending an SCV across the map. Now, interestingly, Rainer is not going for a 15 hatch, 15 pool. It's a 16 hatch rebuild. 16 hatchery, 18 gas, 17 pool. A bit more of an older opening where he looks like he's planning to go a quick link speed. I'm always curious to see. Yeah, okay, no, this looks, like, this looks like a classic clash opening. The old school fast third hatchery on 28. Interestingly, he did build his overlord a little earlier than they normally do, but not too big of a difference either way. And uh, just one worker on gas, pulled his workers down to the natural straight away. Four lings ready to deal with the, Zer the the Reaper. Yeah, this is picture-perfect play from Rainer so far. I, I am curious, though. No, it looks like it's going to be third archery before going link speed. Well done. So very economic, and it's a very classic matchup of builds. That being said, Clem is actually going second gas. He's not going third command center. Remember, guys, there's a, a lot of weight on Clem's shoulders. He, he really, he could, I mean, yes, technically he can lose a map to Rainer. But if he does, then he has to 2-0 Serral after getting revived and and that that's that's you don't want that weight on your shoulders <laughs> then again i think rainer might be the strongest evt opponent than several right now so I, I don't know how clem's feeling but that'll be interesting now there is an overlord on the pillar i actually think the cyclone opening is not great if that overlord sees the cyclones moving out so if this overlord spots the cyclones leaving and he's going to see them for at least a second there then rainer should be able to quickly pull these overlords back to safety they're not too far out Let's go to Rainer's camera. Cyclones are moving out right now. No. Okay, they're not. We don't see it on the mini-map. I'm just staring at that mini-map, and I'm wondering if Rainer catches these Cyclones coming out, guys. There we go. Cyclones are moving out. He's not watching. The Reaper's distracting him. Oh, he didn't notice. He did not notice. He hasn't moved his overlords, which means these two overlords could go down. Wait, he, and he just moved it further forward, which is even worse. Oh, let's go back to everyone's camera. That Reaper from Clem distracting him, looking for the creep tumor snipe at the exact moment as the cyclones move out. Lovely attention to detail for Clem. And oh, three creep tumors. He's very happy to take out these creep tumors. Queens don't want to stand there and fight. So three creep tumors and an overlord. There's other overlords that are moving out. If Clem knew they were there, he'd be going to get those free kills. He's putting on heavy pressure right now. Link speed is done, but he's got Hellions arriving. Hellions will help defend against that. 
Queen's taking damage. Oh, Queen's taking damage. You've got to turn the Queen's to fight, Rainer. You can't just be fully defensive here. He's going to lose yet another Overlord. I'd love to see Clem back off now. You know you're going to force a lot of Lings out. Back off, rotate around, look for more Creep Tumors. There is an Overlord there. He does see it. Is he going to go for it? Oh, it's kind of risky going for that. Keeping the Hellions on the high ground to maintain the lock on. He gets it. He gets it. Beautiful play by Clem. Now, remember, Clem is playing a, a two gas opening. So this is a, a much slower third command and He kind of needs to get damage on. But he catches the Lings there. Rainer in trouble. Oh, Rainer's going to lose a queen as well. Oh, my lord. He was not expecting this Cyclone opening. We haven't seen too many of these Cyclone openings recently. But just two Cyclones are getting so much damage. And Rainer's got to be a little bit upset by this. Oh, because because this is not what he was expecting in this game. He does get rid of one of the Cyclones. Finally, he gets rid of both Cyclones. And can push back these Hellions. But fantastic trades by Clem. 500 resources for 1,300. Liberator going into the main. There's no Queens there. He can just deny that whole base of mining right now, Ken Clem. And he is going to at least deny half of the mineral line. There we go. We're, well done. Spore Crawler builds in range of the live zone before the shot can fire. Nice. Third command center started up at about 4 minutes 30. Second and third barracks building. Factory and starport are building new reactors right now. The Liberator does reposition. And the Queen's going after it. Could have actually killed those queens. That was kind of a wild move for Rainer, but... Whoa! Whoa! Clem! Clem! Oh my lord! Oh my lord, I didn't realize French people like barbecue so much. Holy crunchicles! It's so weird. Guys, that was 15 drones. And I literally had a flashback to 2010, my first time in Paris. And there was a dude, a homeless looking dude, grilling corn on an overturned shopping trolley. But it looked like the sickest grill that he had built out of a shopping trolley I'd ever seen. And it actually looked so delicious and tasty. And I legitimately was like drooling. I don't know. It was like the strangest thing of like, I, I feel like I, this should not be hygienic and it should be kind of gross. But it looked great. And for some reason, that mental image popped into my head. I hadn't thought of this for years. I had not thought of that for years. But seeing Clem just roast those drones <laughs> made me think of that tasty looking corn. Um, so yeah, very random thing to share there, but sorry, just, just popped into my head. The, uh, nothing like getting a bit of blackening and char on the corn, making it nice and tasty and delicious. Zergling pulling back to the, the top, other Zerglings on the left. This is a great start in terms of raw damage for Clem. Uh, but let's, let's actually take a look at the numbers, because Rain is so fast, he's so good at droning in the midst of it. A lot of Zergs, they, they kind of freeze up when you're doing damage. Not him. Ooh. Fresh Mule goes down, gets a Widow Mine, and almost an SCV. Medivacs and Marines do come back for the heals. Remember, Rain has still got a Pervert hanging out on the pillar. Oh, uh, Marines uh, running ahead of the pack. Two Marines go down. Rain is like, hey, okay, no worries. Clem's got to deal with, with Rain as Pervert. If he doesn't real deal with that, Rainer, you know, gets just a lot of free information, which is very frustrating. Now, this Liberator hasn't killed anything yet, but it's still alive. And look at that. Catches him not looking. Gets himself a drone kill. Nice moves by Clem. Clem starting to clear the creep on the front. Rain is back to 66 workers. He's got a fourth hatchery up. But he doesn't have Baneling speed started. He doesn't have his 1-1 one, one finished. So he's behind about 10-15 seconds on the upgrades. Is Rainer. But rainer has got a Spire. So he's going to try and play Mutaling Bane. Playing Mutaling Bane from uh, taking so much damage early in the game is super wild. But it just tells us that's the style he's confident in right now. And he really wants to play it no matter what. Now, 1-1 one, one is done. Armory finishing up in the main. So we should see 2-2 two, two starting soon for Clem. That Liberator on three hit points. It'll be really funny if that comes in later and gets a whole bunch of damage. But with the spores well positioned, it will be tough. Did it see the Spire? It did, actually. 2-2 two, two has started for Terran. Baneling Speed has started for Zerg. 79 workers for Reyno. That means his army is outmatched right now. He's on 80 drones. Going to 84... But he is simply down on the army. The creep spread is, is very important to buy Rainer a, a little bit of time here. Until Baneling Speed is done. 30, 40 seconds away. Oh! Oh! Ling's doing what they can. No interruption at all, uh, Vet Gamer. I'm really glad to hear it, mate. Big thanks to everyone who supported Vet Gamer getting himself a, uh, a new guitar. To, uh, to get back into the practice. Ooh, plus two melee goes down. It did just start, though, so I don't think that's the end of the world. You know, losing an upgrade when it's almost done is terrible. That's the less important upgrade, the melee, and it's also, of course, the uh, one that just started. 
84 drones for 65 workers there. Nice move with the queen trying to tank the Widow Mines, but Clem answers with a burrow on burrow! Oh, 12 banelings! Okay, okay. Rainer is going to be a little triggered by that. Um, he had a bit of a rough start, and now Clem is feeling himself. He's in his face. That was a huge, huge hit. Rainer does not have a fifth up. He doesn't have a macro hatch. He's starting to float minerals. This is a problem because he needs that fifth base up, but it's, it's just no opportunity. It keeps getting denied by Clem being so forward on the map. Clem's fourth base is almost finished. Rainer has a massive work account, but he doesn't really have that much he can do with it. The Mutalisks are out, and they're finally starting to clean up a medevac. His whole army's running south, but onto a ramp. This is a really bad area to fight. Look at that. Clem shoves in the natural. YOLO Jenkins, the Marines. Happy to fight in that natural and trade out in a bit of a crevice. At the same time, he's running in the front. Banelings trying to slow down the advance. Great splits on the Banelings, but the Marines do pull back in time. Rainer does hold, though. Has Clem overextended? He may have. This may have been a little bit too ballsy for Clem because it does potentially give up map control. If Rainer can completely clear this army, this might be good for him, but he's down to just two queens. He needs those Mutalisks down here to clean these libs up. So many bloody Widow Mines. But the Mutas and the Overseers are coming forwards. Widow Mines trying to run away a little bit. So many more Widow Mines arriving. Clem has not missed a beat on his Widow Mine production this game. But finally, Rainer gets rid of all but one Widow Mine. He's going to try to build a hatchery over on that right side. Sending a drone over there right now. More Widow Mines come forward. A Widow Mine gets a decent first shot. Rainer trying to deal with this as best he can. But there's so many Marines. The Banelings trying to remorph. Plus two Carapace has finished in a second. But plus two Melee is not there just yet. Oh, gee, the Banelings? Okay, Banelings do take out two Widow Mines, but the Overseer goes down. Banelings trying to roll forwards, but they are running into a wall of Terran! The Widow Mines! Big hits on the Mutalisks, but the Mutas are enough to overwhelm. But with no Overseer, they can't quite take it. They chase too far. Three more Mutalisks. Four more Mutalisks go down as the Widow Mine recharges. And these Widow Mines are reloading on the left of the map. Fifth Hatchery trying to come up. Clem has had momentum from the start. And there are a few creatures in this world scarier than Clem with momentum. He's on eight barracks. He's got two factories. He's building Thors. He's making three, three. Rainer is stuck, arrested on two, one upgrades. Unable to get any further down the tech line. Clem's numbers are just non-stop. He has layers of Widow Mines going back screen after screen. Four queens trying to build. Rainer cannot spend his money right now. He's got 1,200 minerals in the bank and no lava because he lost all of his queens. It's not a lack of injects. It's a lack of hatcheries and, and, and it's a lack of queens to inject those hatcheries that is costing Rainer big time here. If he had the ability to spend his minerals, he would be able to get back in it. And definitely a game where if you lose control, you do need to take a macro hatchery if you can't get that fifth base up on time. And he, he never built that macro hatchery. It does cost him... I mean, it's, it's easy to point out a strategic error when you've got Clem in your face with units attacking you from all sides for 10 minutes straight. So ever since the first two Cyclones, Rainer has been in massive trouble. Uh, this, is, this is by no means a silly mistake that he's made. It's, it's a, a small mistake that's been forced by Clem's immense pressure. When you're on the back foot like this against any Terran, but especially the best aggressive Terran in the world, Clem, it is a nightmare to deal with. Now, I love this run by, but the Marines are going to punish him. Oh, and the Thor! The one hit point Thor gives the middle finger to those Mutalisks and Rainer has got to be frustrated by that. That one hit point Thor surviving. Meanwhile, Thor in the front, hot pickups. I love the Thor in the front line with the hot pickup. I always say that Mutaling Bane, once they get a Thor or two in the mix and a few Marauders with concussive, you're actually screwed. You need to have, a, you need to counter attack. You can't fight front on. This army gets way too efficient for Clem. Clem did forget concussive shells in the chaos of this game, but that is because he was too busy stabbing Rainer in the face. Clem gets the first map, gets the first point on the board for Team Liquid. All right, all right, all right, guys. Rainer in the top right side of the map, and uh, he did lose that first map. But those first Cyclones got a crazy amount of damage. The fact he held on as well as he did for as long as he did was pretty big, but I think the Widow Mine getting 12 Banelings on top of it, that was kind of like the... On top of the Cyclone damage, Reyna just had to micro so hard for the rest of the game there that it was going to be so difficult to near impossible to get back in it. Now, Reyna is going for the third hatchery. Do you just take the gold base if you're blocked? Interesting. Oh, oh, he's getting blocked. Oh, can he get to it? Barely gets to it in time, and he does take the triangle base up front. Reyna says, okay, if you really want to leave an SCV there to block me, I'm happy. And the two queens are out. Of course, you want to go for an early creep tumor, but you've got to defend it. And the lings do run forward. Good intercept. Oh, no, no, no. You can't kill that, can you, Clem? 
If Clem got that creep tumor, that would have been very impressive. Third command center on the way. Clem's going to go a bit uh, faster up the economic tree rather than being aggressive. And he's still at least keeping the drone pinned down here. The funny thing is he hasn't seen the third hatchery yet. Oh, the Reaper almost dies. Nope, you're not going to get that. <laughs> you can see Clem wants it so badly as well, man. It's so funny because Clem macros perfectly while doing his Reaper harass. But I feel like every time I watch him micro his Reaper, it's like when I play against guys at my MMR, they're like the guys who are floating 600 minerals, but they're microing that Reaper so, so hard. They're like, I gotta kill a Zergling or a drone here. And you're just like, geez, man, come on, go spend your money at home. And they're like, no, I have to micro it like Clem. The difference is Clem's not even like, he's half the time he's looking at home and building structures, even though it looks like he's just focused on the Reaper. It's just the nature of Clem's uh, absolutely ridiculous raw speed. Two gases. Looks like the starport will go on the tech lab, most likely for a Banshee. Creep Tumor did get sniped there before it could uh, cement itself. That one as well. I mean, as Rainer, you're like, look, I am damaging the Hellion at least for this, so I get something of value, but losing two Creep Tumors for that little damage, not the best. Cloak on the way. Now, does Rainer take the gold base next or the one in the back, I wonder? I, I wouldn't mind the gold base. On the other hand, man, it's, it's it's a brutal pushing area up there. That high ground ledge is sick. I did a, a funny rush one game. Um, it was on this map where I built a bunker here against a Protoss who took the gold, thinking it would be able to reach one mineral patch and just put a few marines in it. And it was funny, it didn't actually reach the patch. And it was po possibly the saddest bunker rush I've ever done. But it kind of worked because the Protoss player scouted the bunker later and thought I was doing setting up a tank push and they kind of panicked. <laughs> it was what it was like it was such a, a farcical game where I was like, oh, but obviously if you're playing Urish Clem and you set up like a tank up here and some marines and stuff, it's an it's an awkward area for Rainer to, to defend. So wouldn't be surprised if he avoids the gold base uh, for a little bit longer. Spores going down in each expansion and the lair is already two thirds of the way complete. So he's gonna be able to get a quick overseer to detect that. Second and third barracks on the way. Double engineering bay as well. Does get two kills. Or oh, one kill there, sorry. Two shots off. The best of seven here in the scoreboard is the overall team score, guys. Just keep that in mind. If Clem wins this game, the score will remain 2-1. But he will eliminate Rainer and keep his own life alive. Right now, Clem is fighting to preserve his life, which is very important because if Clem drops a single map, Team Liquid has to use their revival to bring him back. And that means he's on his last life. So, you know, you can't, you can't lose a lot of maps here or you're in big trouble. Clem coming in with Alien Banshee, going after the Queens, but the transfuse is good. Ooh, there was one Hellion that hit every single Zergling there. Just one. <laughs> like literally every Zergling that's in the yellow took a, a single Hellion shot for 14 damage. If that was three Hellion shots, they all would have died. Hellions are pulling back right now. 1-1's one on the way. Baneling speed as well. Spire building. Once again, Rainer wants to play Mutalisks. Interesting. I've seen Serral do amazing with Mutalisks on this map. I definitely think Golden Aura can do okay with it. Equilibrium can do pretty good with it as well. But the upgrades are going to be so behind when you play Fast Muters. 1-1 one, is already there. Uh, beyond halfway done. Armory's already on the way for Clem. His five barracks are up. His factory. It is weird that he went Armory, guys. Normally, Clem always builds second factory before Armory. This time, he sped his Armory up, and that's delayed his second factory. I would say that's a slight inefficiency. Not something he's done on purpose. Because you know, notice the Armory is going to finish a good 30 seconds before the upgrades are done. It's the first time in a while I've seen Clem uh, make that misstep. Still, you could argue better early than late, as long as he starts his 2-2 immediately, but I don't think he'll have enough gas to do that. Marines on the south coming forwards with the medevacs. Oh, uh-oh, Rainer doesn't know about it, guys. This is Rainer's camera, but his army's nearby. He knows, he knows the threat. He will defend the gold hatchery. Clem wanted that snipe so badly, and oh... Eight Marines down. A little sloppy for Clem there. Rainer gets himself a little bit of purchase. Gets a few, one, gets one of those Marines as well. And the Muta's here. And Clem goes, oh, crud. 
I do not want to lose all of these Marines, man. The Hellions are going to come back it up, though. The Hellions chase off the Zerglings. The Marines get unload. And more units coming forwards. Drilling clauses on the way. He builds one turret in each mineral line. Plus two attack starts. No plus two armor just yet. 1-1 one, one only starts at the exact same moment for Raynor. He does get rid of the Banshees up there with the Muters. Very nice trade so far. He's actually traded positively, and he's on 80 workers against 68. However... Clem is going to be rallying army through the middle. He's got not many mines, only one Widow Mine here. He's got Hellbats, though. And he's got a Siege Tank. And he's now got a Thor and more Widow Mines building behind this. Which, of course, is going to be fantastic now. The Mute is dancing around the back line, trying to be a distraction, picking off the Reinforce wherever they can. There is still a Siege Tank in the third as well, ready to deal with runbys. I like that. Nice mass repair. Great reactions by Clem so far. Clem's going to rotate south and try to deny that gold base. Right now, the income is 3,600 minerals a minute for Raynor. The gold base giving him an abundance of resources. He is smashing on the income. And that is why Clem needs this position, that tank position we were talking about earlier. Watch out, Clem! Raynor rolls in with the Banes. Clem was not looking. And that does get a good first Baneling hit. Clears up some of those units. Tank clearing the left side of the gold base. And Raynor has to back off for the moment. He's, if he wants to engage this, he needs half of his army to come down the left. Half from the bottom right, you need to get down here before engaging. And look at that, he's going to scoop in from behind. Mutaling will take out these units as they rally forwards. Queens are dealing with the front-running units as well. I think Raynor may be holding this. He's forced the reinforcements back a little bit. Widowmine Marine Thor, though, will hold on for now. Clem's plus two armor has finally started. He was a little bit late on that. The siege tank is shelling that base. Purple gas is mining. A few gold patches are still mining. And we've got the Lings trying to run forward. Hellbats and the Widow Mine try to defend, but the tank goes down. Good patience by Raynor. His 1-1 one -one upgrades are about to finish. That's the time to fight. 1-1 one -one is about to kick in. It's time to fight for Raynor. Great choice to engage right now. Are there any Widow Mines here, though? It's very hard to see underneath those medevacs. So he splits off a few Banelings, clears the Widow Mines, groups up and goes back in. There's still a lot of Ling Bane behind this, but watch out for the Boom Booms! Watch out for the Boom Booms! No massive Widow Mines landing, though. The Banelings and the Muters are cracking on through. Raynor breaking the front line. This might be it. If he can get rid of Clem here, then Basilisk will be massively in the lead. Banelings rolling into the mineral line. He's going to take out the SCVs, the turret. Oh, this is splendid damage for Raynor. Now, keep in mind, Raynor did lose a few drones. He's only on 73 workers. He lost eight workers during all of that pressure. But he kills 15 workers. That being said, there is a fourth base up for Clem. Clem can rally back, rebuild his workers, and it's close enough on the workers that this is acceptable losses. Plus two carapace starts for Raynor, but he doesn't have plus two melee. His gold base only now re returning to mine. And Raynor, he's got a good mutilisk pack, though. That's going to help him out. 23, soon to be 25 mutilisks. Plus two uh, flyer attack and melee is on the way. The question is, how does he transition? Does Rainy just take a sixth base on the bottom and go Massling Bane? Ooh, barely gets that Widow Mine before it fires. Nicely done. Whoa! Two or three muters getting thrown away there. Oh, watch out, Rainer. Watch out, Rainer. Oh, 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 oh. Rainer's mutalists are getting chewed up. He's lost four mutalisks. Make it five for no good reason. He's going to try and jump on top. But watch out for those boom booms, man. The Thor up front. Oh, the Widow Mine gets a nice smear on those front running Zerglings. Good medevac micro with the evacuation. I think Clem might want to break these rocks just so we can rotate north and south here a little bit easier. It's nice to obstruct the Zerg, but it's... Oh, Banelings! Catch a few of those Marines. Beautiful split there for Clem. I like the way he split some of those units forward. Well done. Now, Raynor needs an infestation pit. He's going to take a sixth base, but if he doesn't go infestation pit, we're going to hit that point in the game where you fall off with Mutaling Bane. Notice how there's eight barracks with more tech labs. If he makes concussive shells, 3-3, three, three, you have eight Marauders up front, two Thors, 10 Widow Mines, 50 Marines behind that. That army destroys Mutaling Bane. You can technically deal with it if you're rich, uh, just by having so many Banelings that you just trade in efficiently, but you beat the army. But if you you really want Hive. Oh, good spread at the last second. Nice reaction there. Where are the Overseers at? He's got one with his Mutalisks, and he's going to try He's got the Watchtower with the Changelings. Mutas could pick off a few of these Medivacs, or he could go into the main base. I'd actually love him to hit the main base again. But man, imagine if he had 25 muters on the map a minute ago rather than losing them. He's up to 30 mutalists. He's going to go for another flyby into that main base. But he's got to hold on with just Ling Bane on the ground. Now, 2-2 is almost finished. 
So Clem's kind of lost his upgrade timing. Remember, it's hard to win the game as Terran, even with an advantage on this map. But Clem's building a lot of command centers, a Ghost Academy 3-3, and vehicle plating. Rainer going after the Thor in the main base. Oh, nice snipe. He's going to go after the turret in the third as well. He says, well, guess what? I'm just going to take out your Widow Mines, take out your SCVs, your Thors. This is brilliant. A Thor does come back in the medevac, gets a shot off, but its splash damage is not that big. Command Center snipe as well. No cancel. That's a kill. Dude, the value. Look at the unit's lost tab. You might have an upgrade advantage, but Rainer is out trading the Biomine player with Mutaling Bane. The inefficient army is fighting efficiently right now. There are Widow Mines all over the map, though. That's going to take a bit of APM to clean these up. He's got to use the Overseers to do that. The Mutalists almost get the Ghost Academy. They get 19 drones. He does fly over the natural, but the Marines and the Thors are starting to cut him off. Oh, big Thor shots. Oh my God, Clem not watching though. The Thor flies into the danger zone and it does go down. The Mutalists are starting to drop like flies though. Oh my God, Rainer rolled in the front. Ling Bane killing another 15 workers. Clem's economy is in D-Town right now. It's absolutely balls to the wall in favor of Rainer. However, Rainer just spent a massively expensive Mutalisk army to do this. A massively expensive 32 Mutalisks have gone down this game, and Rainer still has not cleared up all of the Widow Mines on the map. Can Clem bounce back from this? It's going to be really hard. He's, it's going to be very hard. He's only got three orbitals. He's trying to take the gold base. He's got a lot of infrastructure, but his supply is so down, and I, I think Clem can, um, can't really hang on right now. 26 Mutalisks are out. He's going to have an Overseer with those in the near future. Plus three Carapaces on the way. Plus three Flyer. If Rainer can get up uh, Adrenal and Melee as well, that'll be great. Adrenal does start up. Mutalisk in the south, but the Overseer a little bit far behind. Does take a Mutalisk down with that Widow Mine before falling. Three turrets on the gold base. No building armor or high-sec auto-tracking. Going to be a pretty good idea to clear those turrets for now. Open up a path for future harassment. Whoa, the Marines... Get on top, but the Mutalisks actually take the fight. Um, Widowmine does get a decent shot before getting sniped. Mutalisks flying fast. Lingbane rolling in the front. Ling's in the third base at the front. Lingbane going down towards this gold base. The planetary finishes, but the Lingbane has to back off. Not enough Lingbane to bust a planetary right now. 3-3 uh, three, three Adrenal plus 3 flyer weapons all on the way for Rainer. No Ultras just yet, but the Ultra Coven starts as I say that. The Mutalisk mine going to try and catch it. He gets 1, 2, 3 Mutalisks. Almost gets an Overseer as well. Not bad for Clem on the defense. Now, Clem's efficiency is only 4,000 resources better. Rainer has extra bases. His creep spread has definitely slowed down. He's been all offense the last few minutes. So he's basically just continuing to try to swamp over. You just dive in again on the north. Even more SCVs going down. These Mutalisks are ruining him. Oh, Clem's on Struggle Street right now. I feel like the Mutas have just got so much value and he's going back up to 24 Mutalisks. He's lost 42 this game. But they're giving him so much value, there's no reason to stop building the Mutas just yet. Ling Bane's going to try to engage this army. You can see how tanky those Marauders are, man. Concussive Shells still has not been made in this game. It's a bit of a meme, which I stopped talking about for a while. But it's always Rainer that makes Clem forget Concussive Shells still. Because Rainer brings a momentum, a pace, where Clem does sometimes forget upgrades due to just how frustrating Rainer is to play against. Does try to snipe the ghost uh, on the Mutalisks. Uh, the Mutalisks go in and take out two of those ghosts. Nice move for Rainer. Overseers do take out the Widow Mines, but unfortunately all of the Overseers get taken out. So whilst they tank the Widow Mine shots, he can't kill the Widow Mines for revenge. Second factory goes down though, and that is massive because that's the reactor factory. There goes your reactor mine production. Especially as the Ultras come in as well. They don't care about mines that much. The Marauder count is not that high since Marauders don't shoot up. Building armor is almost finished. Plus two vehicle plating is almost there as well. The muters are running around. Rainer playing a fantastic game. Stretching Clem to his limit. Clem has managed to max out again. Does get himself a good little Widow Mine hit. The second one, not so important. Banelings on the planetary. Ooh, not bad. It's okay for Rainer. He gets 13 SCVs. He attacks the front as well. The Mutal is dancing around the back. Oh, Overseers try to fly in to join up the Muters, but they all get gunned down before they get there. And the Ghosts are starting to limit what he could do here. Those Muters need to get out of dodge. Units lost out 5,000 resources in favor of Clem, but Clem just lost his gold base. His income is in dregs. It's, it's in dribs and drabs, I should say. Only the dregs of minerals left on a few of these bases. The Thors are chasing the Mutalists, but great spread from Rainer. And Rainer's income is fantastic. 3,500 minerals a minute. You can see the way he's transferring bases. We don't see oversaturated bases. Rainer is always moving his workers to new bases. He's at 88. His first Ultra is hitting the field. Massling Bane. Which, to be fair, he's got to be careful with Banelings versus Marauders. But still no concussive in there just yet. 
10 Marauders, 3 Ghosts, 53 Marines, 11 Widow Mines, and 2 Thors. The Widow Mines are needed for Clem to make a comeback here. He's got 2 Thors, 2 Widow Mines. Don't go in there. Don't go in there, Rainer! <laughs> the Thors and the Widow Mines are going to be able to defend uh, the Muters. But can he do that while defending the south from the Ling Bane Ultra? That's the question. Sensor Tower sees him coming. Clem is trying to get in position. He's trying to borrow Widow Mines. Ling Bane Ultra going through a choke point. I don't know about this angle. But I guess he says, whatever, let's just get rid of this planetary. And I don't know if I can really argue with that. Oh, he cancels the planetary and lives. Clem, Clem. He canceled at the last second. He baited Rainer into clicking on it and instantly canceled and lifted. You can only do that on your local server with the reaction speed of a god. Cancel and lift in time. WTF, Clem. But unfortunately, Clem loses two Thors in the main base. The Muta Micro is so good. He's going to take out the Widow Mines as well. Even with that slick move, I don't think it's enough. Ghost take out a few ultras, but Clem is dead in the water and he has to tap out. Clem, he takes the map off Rainer, which is nice, but Rainer takes the map off him, bringing the score to three to one. And that means Team Liquid has to use their revival already. All right, all right, all right. The big dog's out. We got Serral coming out and he is going for what appears to be a 16 hatch. Wait, no, this is a pool first. Oh, it's a pool first opening. Interesting. Okay, he's going pool first. Clem in the top left, guys. And Clem dropping that map to Rainer is disastrous. Because now Clem has been revived. And you know what that means? If Clem drops a single map, then their team is dead. So if he goes 1-1, one one, they'll lose 4-2. If he wins 2-0 and then goes 1-1 one one with Trigger, they lose 4-3. <laughs> he needs to 2-0 Serral, 2-0 Trigger... And then he needs to go one to one at least with whoever gets revived, whether that's Sarah Lorraine. Clem's in trouble, man. Cle this is this is the most epic run ever, or he drops a map and it's just done. At, at any moment, everything is on the line. The SCV goes down, the hatchery gets down. Nice micro for Serral. Well done. Does get his hatchery started there. Does lose two Zergans, but I think well worth it to kill an SCV. Clem being annoying with his Reaper. You're kidding me! You dirty little bugger, you! Oh, I did not think he was able to get a drone there, but the way he both bounced the drone into the center of the non-creep area and bounced the queen away. Disgusting. And remember, even if Clem... Oh, yeah. There's a good point from Twitch chat. They're like, hey, because Clem's been revived... <laughs> and, and, and basically the problem is, like, even if... Say they revive Serral. Say 2-0 Serral, 2-0 is Trigger... They revive Serral, and he goes one-to-one -one with Serral. That still means you have to use Cure versus Rainer in the ace match. And Rainer is massively favored over Cure. So, <laughs> there's an argument here that to really set your team up for victory as Clem, you need to 6-0. You're going to need to beat Serral, Trigger, and then either Serral or Rainer. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh, man. I, I'm laughing in pain because I'm like, dude, I, I already can see myself getting hyped up, him getting, like, really close. And then just, like, I don't know. It's like a Widow Mine friendly fires his own Marines or, like, a Medivac gets hit by, by Widow Mines or Banelings just roll into him when he's not looking. We'll see. So far, Clem has been exceptional at keeping up the pace. We'll see what he's got. Third Command Center is uh, the build into Banshees, so relatively safe. Serral just kind of macroing up from here. It's not like he really got any damage with his pool first, but I think he just did pull first to shut down the Reaper. Reaper still ended up finding itself a drone and two Zerglings for the SCV. Tech Lab building on the barracks behind us. Uh, Non-stop SCV production for Mr. Clement. Clement. And it's a Roach Warren for Serral. No big surprise there. However, it is Ling Speed into Roach Warren off a pool first. Incredibly conservative build for Serral. Sero might just be of the mindset that right now we just need to grind Clem down. Play very safe, very carefully. And uh, make sure these games are long and arduous and eventually Clem's going to make more and more mistakes. I, I doubt that would be Serral's strategy. I'm pretty sure Serral's always going to play the best chance of just winning. Whatever he thinks his just best strategy is and not really make any adjustments like that. Sorry, I love the fish down here, guys. Little school of fish. I love the way they swim around. And then every now and then they all kind of go together, kind of like an actual school of fish. It's actually really cool. I wonder if that was built into the game or if that got added by map makers. 
Ooh, that queen takes a lot of damage, but so does the Banshee. Great micro by Serral. Uh-oh. Or is it? Hey, you should be able to save it. Double Engineering Bay and double Barracks going down for Clem. Fourth and fifth Barracks starting as well. Serral on 56 workers looking for a fourth base down the south. Map Maker is tuning in. Say, it's part of the doodad. It is actually a built-in, the School of Fish. Not sure when they've ever used it in the campaign or anything like that. Pig, will you stream any Zero Space anytime soon? I'm a big noob at it, so don't expect to learn that much from me, but I will be playing probably a little bit at the end of today's cast. I've been playing a little bit off stream, but I haven't really been streaming much. I'm, I'm just figuring out the basics. Because it's changed so much since the early days when I did a ton of playtesting and, and lots of feedback. Dude, that's a good surround. That's really bad. Oh, but actually that was a hatchery kill. I was going to say that's terrible for, uh, for Clem losing all those Hellions. For nine Zerglings only? But getting a hatchery kill makes up for it. It's six minutes. The fourth base has just started, which means Serral cannot drone to 80 workers. He's kind of stuck on 66 maximum effective workers. I mean, don't get me wrong. He could still drone the fourth up and long distance mine a little bit till it's ready so that it's fully saturated. But killing a hatchery is quite nice. 300 minerals there. Bad. She's going to clean up a couple of these. You know what's impressive, guys? Those were all focus fires on the Zerglings. I hate trying to focus fire Zerglings because they're so small, but Clem knows it takes two Banshee shots. If he just A moves, there's a good chance he damages a bunch of Zerglings and doesn't kill them and they just regenerate later. So the attention to detail, always next level with these guys. Armory on the way after the second factory. There we go. That's what we like to see. Actually, he went Armory first again. That's so weird that Clem's done that two games in a row now. Ling's coming in for a run by, but Banshees and Tanks are going to say, nah, get out of here, dude. Medivac even healed the SCV on that. Marine Stim over. They're going to get an Overlord and a couple Zerglings on the retreat. Nine more drones are on the way. So Serral's going to go up to 85 workers. Hive is about a third complete. And he's going melee carapace. So a handful of roaches with roach speed, 11 of them. Oh man, I'd love to see Infestors so badly. He's got Burrow, so I feel like Infestors are just a no-brainer, right? You got the gas, get three Infestors out. But I know I know the top pros love the Viper. They, the, the, the Parasitic Bomb and the Medivax is like something they massively prioritize. They really feel it's very important to lower the Medivac count rather than focus on killing the Marines themselves. Obviously, you want to do both. Baneling speed does start. Is he maybe going to Burrow Banelings, I wonder? Double drop on the south, moving out. Plus two armor does start. Plus two attack just seconds later. 1-1 one, one is about to finish for Serral. We'll see if how quick he is to start 2-2. Two, two. Marines clearing up a lot of creep. It feels like the map control is nothing anywhere near as big as it was for Raynor. On the other hand, it is a roach opening. Uh-oh. Marines. Uh-oh. Ooh. Good transfuses. Still loses a queen, though. Ling Ravager a little too slow to get there. Two Vipers are on the way. Adrenal Glands 2-2 two, two still hasn't started. Super important for Serral to start that 2-2. Two, two. There we go. That scan almost brought his attention back there. Queen's in the open. Ravager Ling in nearby, but another Queen goes down. He's down to just six Queens. And the Banshee also took out the drone there. I'm being very annoying. Really keeping Serral contained on four bases. Serral can't get a fifth. Banshee gets pushed back. And he's going to uncloak it and send it home. Ling's starting to break the rocks, but look out. Ravager's not watching. Serral loses a Ravager. Oh, Clem's trades are getting really efficient. 1,300 resources lost for Clem. 24.37 for Serral. Uh, Clem. Whoa, 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 whoa. Clem a little slow on the pickup there, but he's got a big army on the left. Ooh, Baneling Ling's coming in. Marine's trying to pull back. The Marauder up front tanking quite nicely. A lot of Banelings go down. Finally, that tank falls, but this fifth base is forfeit. Dude, Clem's all over it. Clem's almost maxed. Clem's almost maxed right now. He's got a fourth base on the right. It's not even 10 minutes. He's up to eight barracks. 2-2 two is about to finish. Vehicle weapons level one is about to finish. The 2-2 two -two being delayed for Serral is a big bummer because he is now a good 30 seconds or more behind on those upgrades. The Vipers are here, though. Adre uh, Parasitic Bomb could be massive. Adrenal Glands has kicked in. Ling run by on the fourth will be big. Gets a few SCVs, a Marine or two, and some mining time. He burrows, he unburrows, <laughs> and hopefully he does notice to burrow again in the near future. Yeah, going to force a scan out of those Marines. Very nicely done. Ling Roach coming in from the left. Blinding Clouds on the tanks are delicious. Absolutely lovely engagement for Serral. 
But with no plus two carapace, no Banelings connect on the Marines, and it's still an expensive trade. There's a tank on the high ground on that far left as well. 18 kills on Chad Hammer. You can see the F2. The red is converging, realizing he's taken some good fights. Clem is going to keep pushing forwards. The Viper comes in. Lovely abduct. Chad Hammer does go down, but there's another army behind that. We've got more tanks, Marines, and Marauders coming forwards. Clem feels like he has got momentum. He wants to keep shoving right now. He feels like he's got Serral on the ropes. He is indeed trading a lot better. The Roach Ravager trying to hold on. 2-2. Two, two. Kindness plating and Ultras are not here. They're seven seconds away, five seconds away, but he's having a fight before the Ultras pop. Beautiful killer instinct for Clem. Not giving Serral an instant. No time to get those Ultras out. None at all. And the Marines shove in. And with a reckless vengeance, Clem takes game one versus Serral. In control from start to finish. Did not let Serral get set up. Well played by Clem. All right, guys. Going into this one. Clem in the top left of Equilibrium. And he is doing a dirty boy strategy. Man, that is a very far away proxy. This is the last thing you ever expect. He never does this. He never does this. And it's not a 15-15, it's a 16 hatch. 16 hatchery is much more vulnerable to this than 15-15. This is a two barracks marine proxy. Wait, 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 wait. That barracks was not very early though. This is an economic two racks marine proxy. Guys, he did. Did he not cut workers at all? I feel like you didn't you used to cut workers with the old two racks that Maru used to do, wasn't it? Double 15 or double 16, something like that. This is going to be, so this is basically just trying to get a bunker up and trying to force an overreaction of drones. And he's going to build a factory and a reactor on the high ground, probably command center on the high ground as well. If you go command center on the low ground, that would be absolutely crazy. He's sending an SCV across just so the overlord sees it. This is literally that I'm pretending to play a normal game. That's that. It's literally so Sarah goes, oh yeah, you finished building your barracks. Now you're scouting. Oh, I love that detail to sell the story. He's hiding his Marines right now. The overlord will see it when it comes up from this angle. Match gas pool. Let's see what goes on. Clem literally never proxies. It's like one in 25 games at most. This is the biggest thing I've criticized him for. Is he going to throw away the tournament or will he get himself a second victory over Zero? It's a triple bunker. It's a triple bunker wall. Oh, you cheesy bastard. It's a triple bunker wall. And I don't know if you can drill. I think you can drill out. I think you have to stack all the drones and drill out by attacking the bunker. I think, but he's building a spine crawler. Oh my god. It, maybe he can... Oh my gosh. This is so This is so dirty. Three drones have already gone down. Sarah doesn't know how to react to this. It's a full wall, guys. You can't... You might be able to stack the drones by trying to click on these minerals and then A-click and get out. And that might have been the play, but he needed to do it instantly with every single drone if he was going to do that. Now he's going to try to break out with spines. Now, for those who don't know, spine crawlers outrange bunkers. A marine has five range. The bunker gives plus one to the marine's range or any unit that's inside the bunker. So it becomes a six range marine. Spine crawlers have seven range. However, because spine crawlers are chunky boys, they can only outrange a bunker if they are on a diagonal or sometimes I believe on a direct straight line. But if the spine crawler is like here, if it's in range, it, it'll be able to get hit. So you want to be kind of north, northeast, east, southeast, south, southwest, basically like that. If you go on any other line, if you're like off by a, a space, that spine crawl is way too close. Get it out of there. Get it out of there, Serral. He misplaced that. The hatchery is looking like it's going to fall. Because look, the SCVs can repair this back. They're not repairing. Clem. 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 Okay, he does start repairing. Oof. Definitely took a few seconds there. Oh, he's going to do the in and out micro. So basically, you can get in and out in between the spine crawler attacks. So every time they attack the bunker, you pop out. Transfuse on the spine crawler does go down. Lings are going to go for the break. If he can break out and keep the hatchery alive, this could be good. The Marines do come out of that bunker. The Lings getting a great surround. He's engaging on these Marines and SCVs. A lot of them are going down. A good hold by Serral. A fantastic hold by Serral. Just, he survives, keeps his hatchery up. 15 drones, though, only against 25 or 23, sorry, SCVs. 22 after losing those two. There's still barracks building marines down here. That's kind of crazy. There's no expansion. Oh, we got his, his building placement was off. Clem with a bit of a panic wall off. You can tell he's not used to doing this build. Please raise the door. Get it up, get it up, get it up, get it up. Clem! Clem, you silly billy. Oh, man, his cyclone's not ready. Okay. I mean, it's not that many lings, so it might be okay. Yeah, but I mean, even losing one extra SCV here is so bad. Oh, Clem, I mean, he's doing a build that he never does, so he doesn't have much practice with it. 
Oh, they get another SCV. That's super worth for Serral. Very important. Now, problem for Serral is he's just assuming the barracks went home because that's what any sane person does here. He doesn't realize Clem is doing a one base all-in follow-up. He's going mass, cyclone, medevac, unupgraded marine. And Serral, I mean, he's seen no expansion. He should realize that this is what's happening. He does not need a third base. He just needs to survive. But he might be panicked. He might be stuck in Zerg mindset right now. He needs to not be stuck in the Zerg mindset. Give up the hatchery, pull back. You're up against a one-base Terran. Serral may not, it may not have dawned on him. If I were him, I'd be checking the gold base right now. Oh no, don't lose the queens. Okay, he's got to pull back those queens, I think. Yeah, and these trades aren't as good as they should be. He's got to wait for overwhelming Zergling numbers. I don't know why he's fighting out here away from the spines. Serral getting baited out here. Clem doing such a surprising build. And the surprise factor is massive. Serral making unforced errors. That second queen almost goes down as well. The first one does die. The Marines are tanking with the help of the medevac. The Cyclone's taking out the spine crawlers. If you had the queens and lings, this is an easy defense. But with the spines on their own, he can't do it. He's going to try and go for an engage, but he's only got two queens. One of them is almost dead. The spine's going to go down. The Cyclone Marine here. It is a one base all in. He's slowly building a command center, but he needs to do catastrophic damage now. And he's doing just that. The Medevac Micro is slick. He's picking up these Cyclones, pulling them back. The unit's lost time is out of control. 15 kill Cyclone, 4 kill Cyclone, 4 kill Cyclone, and a new boy does arrive as well. Zergling's on the natural going, oh my lord, this is actually so committed, what the hell? Several panicked, he tried to defend his third base, he got a Zergling and he saw there was no command center building, but it didn't click. Sometimes you're in such an unfamiliar situation. Serral is never expecting to be here against Clem. But look at that, the hatchery, the hatchery, the hatchery! Oh, it survives, the transfuse is clutch! But uh, does it matter? Can he ever defend this? The queens are dying. More cyclones rallying in. Clem goes for a dirty build. Serral held it just fine, but the second wave actually caught him off guard. He just did not realize when that Zergling went in and saw no command center on the natural or in the base, he needed to realize this guy is being a cheeky bugger. I just need to survive. But it just took him a little bit too long to understand because... This is the power of never doing something and then pulling it out in a high stakes environment. Because who leaves the barracks there at this point and keeps building marines? But Serral just, just, he didn't realize letting those queens get picked off was huge. That's a 2-0. That is Clem 2-0-ing Serral. Now he 2 zeros trigger and, he's, and, and it resets the score of the entire match. So remember, he doesn't get an extra point from that because he already 1-0'd him, but he denies Serral getting a point and takes Serral's life away while keeping his own life alive. Dude, this is legendary. Clam bringing out the cheeky build. Very well played. Those queens were so close to creep, but him chasing here was a huge mistake. Chased way too far off creep there. Because if he gets back, that queen's got a transfuse. The other queen will get a transfuse in a little bit. You could bring your other queens and lings down, but yeah, Sarah was panicking super hard here. Ooh, rare to see Serral panic, but Clem, with the surprise tactic, gets it. Well, that 2-0 against Serral is so important. Such a hard thing to do, to not drop a map against Serral. But now a massive favorite. Clem gets to, some would say, take a breather. But I would argue it is still something where he has to keep his mind turned on into gear. And oh, eBay block, dirty build. Nice dirty build. Trigger doesn't see it. Trigger's going down to build a Nexus, and oh, that hurts. Trigger, does he pull probes? I don't think so. He has to take a third base. So Trigger in the bottom right for Basilisk. He is their weakest player, but he's not a bad player by any means, guys. He is not a bad player. And I would say PVT, can we call it a specialty? I don't think I don't think Trigger has a chance against Serral Arena with where he's at in his career in PVZ. But PVT, I see him take, he's beaten Beyond many times. Now don't get me wrong, it's because he's played Beyond a crazy number of times that he's beaten him a bunch of times. Oh, bunker as well. Clem's really just piling the pressure on from the start. Wait, wait. Reactor first into bunker? Is he going two reapers? Oh my god. It's going to be a two reaper harass of the bunker. That's so annoying. And it's just going to be a command center behind it. Very cute play by Clem here. This is a real different one. I'm surprised he hasn't canceled the eBay though to start the command center. This, this feels really weird, right guys? Like, that command center could have been a lot... I think Clem's tired. <laughs> I, th I think we can admit that Clem's tired at this point. I don't think that's a crazy assertion, guys. Normally, the moment you see the Nexus, you cancel the engineering bay. 
to get the money back and start your command center. Like as soon as you're about 250 minerals, you're like, oh yeah, let's get like 100 minerals back from that eBay. Let's go. Now remember guys, Trigger does just need to take one out of two maps off Clem. And even if he loses a map, it's a 4-3 victory for Basilisk. So, so Trigger is a dangerous player in the matchup. I like that Clem is dictating what's happening though. He's not sitting back and letting Basilisk surprise him with something. He's basically saying, nope, let's just go for it. Oh, and look at that. There's no shield battery yet. So he, he might even be able to kill the uh, Adept potentially. Oh, watch out. The Adept on the high ground is so clever. Oh, can it not reach? Maybe if he stands here? It, can it not reach? If those Reapers just go slightly to the right. Oh, Trigger's like, please, please <laughs> let it get that hit off from the high ground. But it just can't. He's going to have to shade down there. Oh, and he loses a probe. They're, they're mining out of range of the battery, which is unfortunate. The Reaper Micro, so irritating. Stalker, two Adepts, will clean this up. On this map, he can't hop into the main base at least, so that's good for Trigger. Unfortunately, Trigger can't heal while he's down there. So he's going to have to wait for that other shield battery to come up. And as it does, he will be safe. Now, Trigger's very calm at handling bunker rushes normally. But this is just a slightly different one, the bunker on your third base. So it is quite annoying. And look at the way the SCV is poking in and out there. It's going to have to battery overcharge. And there we go. Battery overcharge does go down, but another probe falls. That's three probes in total. There's four. Oh, man. These probes cannot be mining down here. He's going to lose another Adept if he's not careful. The SCV on the repair is so annoying. Clem, leave him alone. Leave him alone, you bastard. That's so... This micro is disgusting. That probe barely survives. The bunker gets the salvage. He gets 75 minerals back. Find it. He's like, oh, by the way, I built a command center on location, and I've got a three racks on the way. So annoying. The way he did the double bounces and the repair. And every time a projectile from an Adeptal Stalker would go after the SCV, he would just basically pop in and out of the bunker. Another, another probe. Oh my lord, Clem. I mean, Trigger's work account is still seven ahead, which shows he's been doing a good job. But okay, there's no way out now. I mean, he could try to circle actually. Yeah, he could circle to the right. It's actually not walled off. Oh my god. If he gets another probe, Trigger's going to have an aneurysm. The three racks is already on the way across the map. Stim and shields, 20 seconds away for Stim, 30 seconds for shields. The Adepts are trying to shade forwards. Those shades finished, though. That just means he has even less units at home. Oh, no. There's still a Reaper in the main being annoying. And look at this, guys. That is 12 Marines, three Marauders. Clem is just shoving it in right now. The engineering bay block into the reactor first, into the bunker double reaper, into the three racks. What an absolute ass. And I mean that in the most positive way possible because that is your job. This is a competitive war game and your entire goal is to make your opponent feel like they didn't even get a chance to play the game. Clem with a crushing five minute victory in game one over Trigger. All right, all right, all right. Clem has now tied up the series three to three. But remember, he still has to play the second map against Trigger. And if he loses this map, it's going to be 4-3. Game over. Best of seven complete. Trigger, if he wins this map, then obviously he wins it for his team. If he loses, well, doesn't matter. Just means you guys get to revive a player. And Clem already has been revived, so... <laughs> Yeah, if we get to that point, it'll be, um, they have to, it, it's basically either one player, two zeros the other, or it's a one, one, and we get the final ace match, which would be very bad for Liquid. Clem, Clem really wants to two zero the next match. Personally, I feel like Reyna will probably come out, but I don't know. I kind of feel like Angry Serral is actually very powerful, and I, I bet you Serral is angry after the previous series, so we'll see how that goes. Trigger coming down south right now to go for an expand. Now, it, he's looking for the eBay, first of all, making sure that doesn't happen again. Man, Clem's been really annoying with either eBay blocking or rushing Factory Marine, Reactor Cyclone, uh, or Reactor Hellion. He's basically just in the face of Protoss players, not giving them a lot of room to breathe lately, and he's doing it very well. Now, Trigger is moving across the map with this probe. Interestingly, he doesn't have a probe headed towards his natural. There we go. I was going to say, if you want to go Cybercore before Nexus, you have to use, you have to send a probe down a little ahead of time because you do end up on so many minerals. Nexus does go down. And yeah, this is going to be the Marine Factory Reactor build. Dude, Clem does this all the time. It's very annoying to play against. It's, it's hard to pin down exactly what he's up to. I got the joy of getting destroyed uh, by this build while playing Protoss the other day in the Weekly Cup. 
Interesting, not building the factory so close. Almost as if he doesn't want to swap it over. Interesting. Bit of a late SCV scout for Clem. He will just check that there's a nexus that he's not getting one based. Now, obviously, uh, there's a lot of people who watch these sort of series and they go, yeah, Trigger's not that good. Trigger's actually been instrumental in Basilisk uh, doing so well in the regular season. There's a reason that Onside, waiting in the grand finals, is the only team that did better than Basilisk in the regular season. And, and a big part of that's Trigger. Remember that Raynor did not perform that well in the regular season, even though he's been kicking butt since then. Um, uh, you know, uh, Trigger beat Beyond multiple times. He took maps off top players many times throughout the season uh even when sometimes rainer you know dropped either a map or sometimes went down zero two to players that he was meant to be heavily favored for so trigger was actually instrumental that being said clem has often been making guys like max Bax, best pvt in the world look lost recently like it looked like he doesn't belong in there with him uh whether that's the maps the the confidence of clem uh something changed in the balance i i would say it, it seems to be pretty specific to clem Right now, he seems to look unstoppable in the matchup. He has this confidence where I think the, the problem right now for the Protoss players seems to be that they don't feel super confident in the late game. And Clem feels confident at every stage of the game. Like he's got scary pushes that can kill you, scary pressures. But he also is so happy. If he sees you're playing a little bit heavy on the mid game, he'll just chill, take a fourth, take a fifth, go range liberators. And he's very calm and happy to play every stage of the game. Whereas it feels like the Protoss players are often trying to catch him off guard and, and get a victory. But his scouting's just been so good, he always sees it coming. And we never really see a surprised Clem getting caught completely off guard. Or when he does, he micros his way out of trouble. He kind of clutches his way out of trouble despite having no warning of it coming. Something very few other players are able to pull off, but... Clem is a magician. Looks like a two Widow Mind drop. Pretty standard opening for him. Hellion's going to drive in for the scout. Sees the Robo. And it's, in, it's a two gate blink Robo here, guys. We should be seeing either a third base or a double gas for Trigger once this Hellion's gone. Doesn't get himself a probe kill. Good micro for Trigger. But no gases on the natural. Oh, gold base. Okay, I love it. This map is meant to be very, very good. And I mean, these guys keep forcing Clem to play on equilibrium over and over again. Because this map's meant to be really good for Protoss and Zerg against Terran. Alright, Clem dancing around with the Widow Mind drop. He sees the Stalkers and he's like, no worries, I'll just hide over here. Are these power generators? Pretty cool, man. Looks like a siege tank's coming out, but I think Clem senses that this is not a four gate blink because the stalkers are still at home. He's playing kind of risky. No bunker on the high ground, no second tank. I feel like he's he's being a little risky, but it's perfect. Like he doesn't know for sure there's a third base, but this is absolutely the correct thing to do against this third base. Shield battery on the way, up to four gases. So we're gonna see Colossus, a link, and a gold base. Wow, trigger really. Pushing that greed very nicely. I love this build for Trigger. And I think it's perfect against what Clem's doing. Clem's stim and shields won't be finishing for a while. I think about seven minutes is when there's going to be a scary bio army out here. And it looks from timing wise like Trigger should be able to have a Colossus. Good little pack of stalkers and charge finished by then. Aren't these the stacks from the Matrix where the humans are in them? Oh, you think humans are in these little things on the other side? Oh, maybe. Mm. Raven coming Base around the south. He did see the probes long distance mining. I'm not sure if he noticed it though. Yeah, he sees a probe heading there and he's going to go. Now, auto turret harass could kill the probes on the bottom because they're out of battery range. Yeah, didn't need to pull the guys on the left, did he? Oh, maybe these guys would just be slightly out. All right. Good defense. First auto turret does nothing. Widow mine drop still poking around the top. I like how he's patrolling it. Because if you leave it static, your opponent's eyes will notice when there's movement. So if you look at this from Trigger's vision, look at the top of the minimap. See how there's a red dot moving back and forth. So now it's very hard for him while he's doing other things to notice when Clem starts microing it. Whereas if it's sitting completely still and then you notice movement up there, you go, oh, he's microing it. He's coming in with a Widowmine drop. Quick, look up here and micro. So that's why you'll see pros put that on a, a patrol path. Nice stalker micro so far. That is a lot of marine marauder. We said about seven minutes. It looks like indeed seven minutes is going to be the scary moment. These medevacs can boost across the map once they're out. 
Got a Widow Mine drop there, a Raven there. And what have we got to defend? Second Colossus is almost out. I think two Colossi could potentially defend this. Problem is, if Clem goes north into the natural, like, you have to be able to hold this area. If you can't hold this area, you might be screwed. If Clem goes north, he's going to get the Colossus. Oh, trigger, trigger, trigger. Watch out, mate. No, trigger. Oh, no, he's going to lose. Oh, he focuses the Marines. He realizes I'm going to lose it anyway. I might as well get some big shots off. It's just definitely the right call. Ah, losing a Colossus is unfortunate, though. The bio, they will all heal up. So it's like, yeah, you got a tank, a Marauder, a few Marines for a Colossus. It's not the worst trade, but definitely not the best. Oh, Stalker movement was good. Medivac's very damaged. Clem goes back to patrolling up there, the naughty boy. Fourth and fifth barracks are getting their add-ons. It's going to be four tech labs, one reactor. So he's not going to have a lot of Marines. It's going to be a very Marauder heavy into Ghost Army. Third command center is up. He's got an armory coming in behind this. That'll make the Widow Mines invisible. It'll also allow him to start plus two weapons when plus one armor is done. I love Trigger's observer positioning. You see he's pretty much uh, where the army's coming from. <clears throat> no sentry in the army. The lack of guardian shield can help some uh, can can hurt sometimes. And oh, he keeps changing targets. Clem. Uh, he was trying to bait it so he could blink with the stalkers was Trigger. But Clem just kept changing targets to make sure the widow man didn't fire just to ex extend the problem. And look at this. Look at this three prong pressure, guys. Auditor turret comes in, focuses the probes, does lose the raven. And looks like the widow mine drop in the top did not come in. This guy, uh oh. Clem with a rare moment of miss micro, but Trigger is not doing anything about it either. Oh no, both players just not watching. Is there is there a prism or something? What's going on? Oh no, Trigger. Oh, five probes go down there, and it looks like that widow mine drop will poke in the back. Still got this widow mine drop up here as well. There's no cannon in the main, but it looks like Trigger just f would Uh oh, uh oh. He pulled those probes from the main, which means. The Widow Mine gets in, gets a probe, and now he gets in as well. Oh, this is so frustrating. These Widow Mine drops trigger. He's handled them well uh, for the most part until that moment where another seven or eight workers go down. And guess what, guys? That cannon's not in time, which means another four probes could go down. Great reaction. Great reaction time there. We'll clean it up. Out in the middle of the army, uh, middle of the map, sorry, a giant army is there. Fourth command center, second engineering bay, plus two weapons, three ghosts on the way. I remember a lot of players used to complain to me that Protoss is basically a race filled with comeback mechanics and Terran has nothing. And I always said, the Widow Mine Drop. It was a turning point in my TVP when I realized that Widow Mine Drops are just something you should always be doing in like the mid to late game. I don't like the Widow Mine Drop opening that much when they're on two base. I think it's good at a high level. But once they're on four bases, three bases, just constantly Widow Mine Dropping and forcing cannons in the mid game is so powerful. Oh, big timing for Trigger. I like the, the deactivation of that Widow Mine. Colossus poking forward. Stalker's looking for the Vikings, not able to get him. Trigger's trying to poke here, looking for some advantageous fights. Clem is not stimming, which is super smart for him. Because he's like, oh, you don't actually want to fight this. I'm going to wait for you to properly charge in, and only then will I commit. Plus two attack, plus one armor's on the way as well. 180 supply versus 188. Pylons are building right now. Got to be careful, mate. That that uh, unit up the top did just go down. Prism is still ready in the back to warp in more units, but the Vikings, the EMPs are huge. Huge EMPs. One Colossus goes down to the Vikings. And I love the way Clem is, is concave managing this. You'd think the Colossus give you longer range, but because the Vikings counter the Colossus, the Marauders end up being just as long range as the Stalkers, and he just kept setting up his concave coming in from both sides. And that was fantastic. Now a fourth base is on the way. Triple Robo coming in. Trigger has been forced to the next stage of the game, realizing, okay, I'm not going to win with that sort of army. And Psystorm and a Dark Shrine. Oh, I love it. I love it. Very hard to use. Absolutely, Clem could still just butcher you, but I love the, the choices here to get every piece of splash damage. Look at the way Clem changes targets to slow every different Zealot. Only lets one get away. Immortals are building right now. We've got two Immortals, soon to be three, two Colossi, uh, two Archons, one Colossi. Only one High Templar right now. Now, when you play Storm like this, you want to leave a High Templar in your main. You want to have a few High Templars scattered around, one down here. Because just having a two supply unit stack up that Storm energy over time is very powerful. Disruptor, go, go, go! Ah, uh, trigger with a slow reaction. He had an Observer out front. That was a clever ambush disruptor there. 
but he's actually not building any more. He's just going Storm Immortal. Interesting. The Factory Scout is there to see if there's any Prisms or Runbys. He's already got two Starports, so he doesn't really need any more Starports. And he doesn't plan on building any more Widow Mines. It's just Bio, Ghost, and Libs at this point. So Clem just decides to get a bit of vision. And look at that. He sees the drop coming. So super worth it. He's also got a Viking on the north. And a little pack of Marine Marauder as well. He's going to try and take care of that Prism. Nicely done. Gets a couple Zealots for free. Units lost tab. <laughs> Three and a half thousand resources in favor of Clem already. And he's building four command centers, a fusion core, and a third starport as well. Ship weapons on the way. Three, two upgrades are coming in. This is uh, going to be a very difficult late game. Now, Trigger's going mass immortal. I like six, seven immortals in the army. I don't know about mass immortal. I guess there are only four supply. That's probably the best thing about the immortal, right? If you really think about it. For how tanky it is, it is the meatiest thing you can get with Protoss for 4 supply. 300 hit points including the shields and a 100 hit point barrier that can be activated. EMP of course removes part of that. 6 command centers we're building at a moment there. What the hell? Clem is building the Iron Bank. Clem is building insurance. He's saying, come and get me Protoss player. And to deal with this, you basically need to go Tempests as well and chip it in with like Tempests, maybe... Get a few carriers eventually. It's so hard to get up to all that tech. Oh, Storms! He's a little clumped on his High Templar. Bad micro for Trigger's High Templar. He has no splash damage. Uh, you want to leave these High Templars scattered around your army. But he doesn't have any right now. It's just a big ball of Immortals, a few Archons, a Colossus, and a couple Zealots and Stalkers. Quite a lot of Stalkers. 17, in fact. 3-1 upgrades for Protoss against 2-2 two -two for Terran. Lots more upgrades are coming in on both sides. Nukes being made by Clem as well. Clem is happy to play the late game on this map. And as advantageous as the gold base feels sometimes with that double purple gas and the gold, Trigger did not manage to use it to get himself into a, an amazing position. He's, he's got a good late game setup, but Clem has an amazing late game setup as well. I mean, Clem is rich as they come. He's got so many orbitals. He's on six. And with these four command centers, when they morph into orbitals, dude, he's going to be rich as... Oh, the ghost runs forward. He's going to try to snipe, but he runs out of... Uh, he runs away there after the stalker blinks forward. Storm does land on just a front unit or two. And there is a prism now. It's a speed prism with the storm available. Oh, he's trying to drop it, but the EMPs were pretty big on top of that uh, high Templar prism there. One more storm comes forward. Good pullbacks for Clem. Very good pullbacks for Clem. Six Liberators building right now. Four more Orbitals are building. Triggers up in amongst the production. The Vikings up there not really having much of a purpose. Them in the bunker trying to defend the Zealots up north. As the Liberators come forwards, he's going to try and push south. With these Immortals, you can bust Planetaries. Eleven Immortals can bust, bust Planetaries very hard, but he doesn't want to get caught by the Marauders and the Libs. He's going to take it out. Yeah, there's no way you can stop that from taking it out, which is good. Liberator does get taken out, as does an Archon, though. Units lost tab, 4,000 resource difference. This mass immortal planetary busting army is actually sick. I'd love to see a, a few carriers or something uh, just to diversify it a bit. The High Templar are way too clumped up right now, though. That's a big problem. Those High Templar are way too clumped up. He does, you know, he's got a decent little zoning storm there. Gonna have to spread a few of these High Templar behind this army. You want to keep a few in reserve. There is no reason to have six, seven High Templar clumped like that. Oh, man. One EMP could be very scary but he does spread them up i like that spready archon morphing down here on the front and mortals trying to fight one of them does go down 10 immortals now an archon 20 stalkers six high templar archon on the south gets picked off denying the gold base is actually really cute stalker's gonna blink forward gonna try and take out these libs the storms are pretty big on those libs softening them up but not enough to actually do it there's too many libs there man you really need to catch the libs running forward all clumped up, land a storm on them to soften them up, and that's when your Stalker and Archon can really clear them up. Plus three armor is on the way. We've got a Colossus as well. Extra Nexus on the south going up there. It's funny, I played a, um, a half an hour PVT, me as the Protoss trigger as the Terran, his off race, on Radu set. Was it half an hour? It might have been 40 minutes. A really long one um, a few weeks ago on the ladder and I, I stormed his army about a thousand times and killed so much bio but he had a gold base I didn't know about and he, he did beat me at the end of a game but 
It was cool to see Trigger's actually been off racing a lot of Terran to learn about his enemy. Clearly understands that Storm is a very, very powerful piece of tech, but it's just hard to break in right now. And Clem is so calm on the defense, it's hard to get the damage. Trigger's immortal army trying to pull back the concussive shell. Marauder's so annoying. Oh, look at the way he's tagging multiple immortals. He's not letting Trigger out of there. Oh, God, and the limbs are sieging. Oh, man, he's, he's forced to fight. Great Storm. Great Storm, but he has to move forward through the zone. He has to move forward through the lib zone. The Stalkers need to go after those libs. They will take out at least some of them. But, man, this was actually a very dicey situation for Trigger. It seems like... What were you doing there, mate? A random Colossus in the middle of the map does walk in and go down. That's kind of a bummer because that announces you're rebuilding Colossi. So immediately five Vikings are building. Two Liberators hiding up the top. Single Stalker left on the defense. Uh, Clem doesn't have a lot of money, but he has mass orbitals. You might look at this and go, hey, Trigger has more bank. There's nine orbitals. The moment Clem establishes a base, whenever he wants, he can drop 10 mules on this and just have unlimited minerals. That is the big problem. That is the, the reason why Trigger is in so much of an issue here. Speed Prism tries to get in the main and gets destroyed. Widow Mines and Lib sieging on the bottom. He's going to have to pull back north. Stargate is finally on the way here for Trigger. And, oh, Liberator comes in, but not actually Micro. It's a lot of Stalkers to warp in, though. You've got to be careful warping in the mass Stalker. Oh, the Prism. Good drops. Nice. Storms to zone a little bit, but he is getting jumped on. I like that he unloads this last High Templar, but great pre-spreads with Clem coming in from two sides. His army's just a bit more set up for these fights than it normally is. The Immortals do make a good account of themselves. Units lost tab is 9,000 in favor of Clem. Another Liberator comes down the south side. This time, no Stalkers to intercept it. And these Stalkers will have to back off in the middle of the map. Two Libs up north as well. Nothing there on the edge defending. And that Liberator will be a massive nuisance. Trigger is down in supply. He doesn't have much bank. And you can see there in those resources, look, Clem just has unlimited money mining. He can just do whatever he wants. The double lib being very annoying there. Trigger's going to have to warp in a few Stalkers on that high ground to deal with it. Another Liberator coming in from this side. Oh, this is so annoying for Trigger to deal with libs from every di direction. Zealots do pull back from that side. Stalkers blink forward. At least they get rid of that Liberator. But this one, I think, is actually close enough. He could probably hit it with two or three Stalkers. I could be wrong. I think two or three Stalkers could hit it from that edge. Cleaned up these two libs as well. So far, 12 Liberators have gone down in this game. 37 Stalkers. Their Prism there with the High Templar in it. A big target for the Vikings. It's kind of a problem now because the Colossus and the Storm are both countered by that. Liberator in the south is going to be dealt with by a Void Ray. Big army moving in, but he loses his full Prism. Oh no, Trigger sends the Speed Prism in first. It's not even a ground army. It's just mass Viking lib. It's just max, maxed out on Viking Lib with a handful of Marauder Ghost. And you know what? It's excellent. It's a fantastic army. They have plus two ship weapons. The Stalkers were getting two shot. The Viking shooting down the, the Prism is such a big problem. Command centers are getting killed over here. Not cancelled, which is a mistake for Clem. But look at that. He's even nuking from the high ground. What a D-bag. Trigger, he's attacking on the other side of the map. He may not notice that. And he will lose it. At the very least, a lot of static defense. He moves his Dark Templar forward. Oh, the, the nuke does land. Takes out some of the static. The nuke does die. But at the same time, look at this army get hunted down. This is so brutal. The Viking Lib chasing him down. One of the Colossi falls. That is Colossus number five dying in this game. Oh, the Marauders chasing him. There's nowhere to run. There is nowhere to hide. And it's these sort of chasing scenarios where you need Psy Storm or Disruptors to drop on him. But with neither of those available right now, he's up against the ropes. Trigger is he's, he's down Poo Poo Creek without a paddle. And he's going to have to get his hands dirty if he wants to make it further in this game. And I don't even know if that's enough. He needs to do some amazing maneuvers. He's got a few High Templar here. A few Storms would be big right there, but oh no! Okay, gets a few decent Storms to soften him up. But all it does is soften him up. you got to get more than that to actually finish him. Oh, the High Templar! Nice Storms on top of a few of these Libs, but there's just too much. There is way too much to defend with that. He's going to go for a counterattack. Mass Alert, Stalker, Immortal Void Ray going across the map. Clem in a position where if he lost a single map to two opponents, he would be dead. He had to win 4-0 against Serral and Trigger, and he's going to be able to do it. And even then, all it's going to do is make the teams tied up. Clem is a one-man army fighting exhaustion game after game after game, but his macro cannot be perturbed. His beastly, gigantic Terran force will not be stopped. 
He has more Liberators than you can account for. He has enough Vikings to blot out the sun. His Marauders and Ghosts are just the icing on top of the absolutely delectable dead Protoss cake right now. Trigger is getting pushed back. His army is out of tech. He's only on 58 probes. His income is very low compared to the Terran. And the Terran keeps on EMP and keeps evading the storms, keeps sieging the libs. And there is just nowhere here where there is not a Liberator covering. There is so many Liberators. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Uh, his Void Ray did go down. There's five High Templar, three Immortals, two DTs, and 12 Stalkers against the permanently maxed Terran with now 4,000 Minerals and 1,200 Gas in the bank. No danger of his bases mining out either way, guys. Credit to Trigger for doing as well as he did with his unit movement, his storms, and everything else. He has fought like a beast. It's just that fighting against Clem right now, as we saw, you could be the greatest player of all time, Serral, and get 2 0 getting absolutely walloped by a dirty push in that second game. Uh, Trigger trying his Zealot counterattack, but Clem is always so ready. His production is so thick. This is not a, a fragile Terran who's just got one good push. This is a Terran who is girthy as heck. He's got nine orbitals, two planetaries, two ghost academies, four starports, eight barracks, and an endless stream of elite Terran units coming out of the production. Nice ambush here for Trigger. I love that move. Gets a bunch of these units, but Clem quickly pulls back. And he says, okay, no worries. But he will turn around. And the moment those libs siege, I don't think he can kill the planetary. It has five armor. Oh, he's going to get it. Now he needs to get out. Nice move for Trigger. Actually snipes a uh, command center there. If he could see the banks, though, his heart would sink. He probably has an inkling that Clem has a lot of money. But uh, he probably doesn't realize just how massive. Six and a half thousand resources combined. Whoo! What Protoss composition beats this if you could just make it? Well, you want to get out a few Tempests and a lot of Psy Storm. It's very difficult at this stage of the game. It takes immense micro. You need a lot of High Templars scattered all over the map. Ideally, you can counterattack with other units as well. Uh, but yeah, definitely, uh, I would probably have one or two Disruptors in the mix to try to land on the Bio. But at this point, it's almost all air. So something you can do is you can get about 30 Zealots and overwhelm the ground with just Zealot A move. And then basically just focus on dealing with the air with like stalkers and stuff. So if you're rich enough, when they get this heavy on air, where they've got 13 medevacs, 9 vikings, and 12 libs, actually mass zealot stalker can beat it just because they've only got, you know, 9 marauders, 8 ghosts, 9 marines. So, so there's actually like a thing where you'll often see the Protoss is kind of kiting back with tempests, layering in storms, using cannons and batteries to wear down the army. And then if they notice that they're, you know, both sides trade and, and you know, it's like, hey, Terran only has, has, has air, that's where Protoss can swap back into Mass Zealot Stalker and start to just run through the lib zones, blink past them and start to gun down the air units. So th there is a little bit of a weakness you can sometimes find, but of course Trigger doesn't have the money to do that. So he's simply trying to fight where the Liberators are not. But Liberators starting to work their way home. Whenever you're in a base trade, Liberators are really good to send home while the rest of your army runs forward. The Vikings, the Marauders, the Ghosts absolutely destroying. The Vikings going to go up north. They're going to try and land behind that base and ruin that mineral line by the looks of it. Ooh, yep. Yes, they are. Vikings. No, they're flying away right now. Interesting. The bio army will go down by the looks of it. Mm, zealots are trying to deal with it. There's no detection. There's no way to see those cloaked ghosts. Those three, three cloaked ghosts. There is only one observer on this map. The ghosts are killing everything. He's also scanning. So if an observer comes in, it will get sniped. The only observer is sieged up on the other side of the map. And there's still no way to see these ghosts. They're killing probes. They're killing zealots. They're going to click on the Nexus. A few of them will run out of energy, but man, this is savage. Planetary is defending zealots in the south. We've got medevacs trying to fly home as well. And that is going to be that. Yeah. One or two Phoenix or Void Rays to get rid of the Liberator harassment earlier would have been big as well. But it looks like Trigger is down in the dregs without a chance. Generally speaking, that is the thing, though. It's all about the map control, the, temp the, the, the storms being spread out everywhere, having a crazy number of High Templars as they go into Heavy Lib, and, uh, and trying to find the moments to, like, blink in with 10 DTs and kill a command center, or, or, or swap in a mass zealot stalker and jump on part of their army. But if the Terran is already at nine orbitals, which he was at earlier, he's actually killed a few of them as trigger. It's usually a bit too late. I would say if you let Terran get nine, ten orbitals, half of the map cemented in turrets and planetaries most of the time whatever race you're playing it's too late and you've already lost at that stage it takes Terran many many minutes to get that set up so usually you want to work that window from 10 minutes to 15 minutes because by the time you get to 20 or 25 minutes 
Terran has so many command centers. You kill a base, they just land a new command center, drop 20 mules and mine thousands of minerals. Clem, the absolute monster, is forcing the Basilisk revive. What an absolute savage. All right, all right, all right. It's going to be Rainer who comes back alive for Basilisk. 16 hatchery for him in the top left. But because Trigger just lost, I believe Clem gets the uh, the map pick apparently is what I've been told. Which would make sense that Hard Lead is coming out first here. Very good TVZ map. There are some fantastic aggressive positions and the like. So we'll see if Clem, tired six games in, five wins, one loss, can win the rematch against Rainer. If they go one to one, it is very bad for Team Liquid and Clem's team. Because if they go one one, your aces come out, you've got Q of uh, several. And I'll tell you what the chances of victory are there. I don't I don't know what Aligulak would say. I'm going to say 3% for Cure to beat Serral. Even in a best of one. I mean, maybe he has a super genius tricky build he's planning, like a battle cruiser roll in. But that's essentially Cure has to do something like that. Because Serral is such a better match than him that Serral is likely to open Overlord speed, scout everything that's coming, and just basically be unkillable. So Clem doesn't just want to go one to one with Raynor. He wants to 2-0 him. Whereas Rainer, much like Basilisk has been in the position of throughout this entire series, they just need a map off of Clem. Rainer managed to do it before. Let's see if he can do it again. SCV goes across the map, immediately turns around and goes home. Reaper diving in forwards. We've already got that drone on the triangle base. Going after the Zergings, nice micro for Rainer. Icy, cool, and calm so far with the Ling micro, but Clem's focus fire is good. He's going to get two Zerglings. Very nicely done. Backs off before the Queen can pop. Notice he doesn't want to lose his hit points, because if the Queen puts a Creep Tumor down, he wants to be in range to punish it. And that's why that hold position micro. Right-click, hold position, right-click, hold position, right-click, hold position, something that Clem loves to do. Now as the second queen comes out to guard it, he looks for the snipe, but Rainer is very safe, gets it down. Just by doing that micro, it delays the creep spread by about 10 seconds. Definitely makes a big difference. Alright, down here in the bottom right side, we've got the uh, barracks factory starport. After the third command center, second gas is on the way as well. Clem's playing as standard as they come. It looks like a Banshee build to me. It could be Viking into Liberator, but it definitely looks like Bans uh, Banshees. Damage is a creep tumor, not quite able to kill it. Two more queens are building. Ling speed has started. It's almost uh, three quarters of the way done. Pulling off gas completely did Rainer. But notice he's putting back on gas immediately on 3.30. Interesting. Very interesting. Third command center almost finished. Hellion starting to rally forwards to join up with that Reaper. And it is a Viking, so it's going to be a Viking first, but Rainer's already in his back door with an Overlord. Hasn't sent it into Scout just yet. Three queens coming out. Four queens on the map, so it's going to be at least seven queens. Probably eight or nine this game. Non-stop Hellion production so far. Going from four to six. Hey, the Reaper stays there, pulls back the Hellions. The Reaper can inject combat drugs, the Hellions can't. So Clem there wisely lets the Reaper stay a little bit longer to finish off the Creep Tumor while preserving the Hellion hit points. It's those details that do add up over time. That Overlord finally coming in for the Sacrifice, a very delayed Sacrifice. But it's going to give him a full scout. Where is that Viking? Looks like it's out in the middle of the map. And it's kind of a shame because it was about to find an Overlord kill. But he's now sending it home to confirm the kill on this Overlord. Does take out a few creep tumors there. Knowing that it's a Liberator severely weakens the Liberator pressure. So Clem's going to be pretty upset about that being scouted. Double Engineering Bay hasn't gone down just yet. There we go. Lair coming up first. We should see a Bailing Nest and an extra gas. Second gas goes down. Bailing Nest. Double Evo will probably go down at about six minutes uh, with this build. And Rainer likely to take the fourth base up north. Hasn't had a chance to spread the creep across the middle just yet. The Hellion Reaper being very active to stop that creep getting too far forward. Oh, the Viking did not kill the other Overlord. The Marine must have got the last kill on that. The last hit, I should say. 
And Liberator flies in, takes big damage from the Spore Queen, pulls back. Second Overlord dying there on Reyna's side of the map, but he's built extra in preparation. And double Evo goes down on 530. So a mixture of very, very quick Evos and a fast lair. But not having the Baneliness ready to start Baneling Speed on time, I, I would argue that's a mistake for Reyna. I think he was hoping to start Baneling Speed before the six minute mark. It's going to be starting about 615. Fourth and fifth barracks is on the way right now. 1-1 one, one upgrades are already started. So Clem's got the lead there. His third is mining. Liberator's back here and he will repair that with two SCVs before queuing them back to the minerals. Is the music off or is it just really quiet right now? Now we'll see if that music comes back on in a sec. I don't hear anything right now. <laughs> Music's for narcs, mate. The hype of the game, the sounds alone should be enough. Marines, Widowmine, and Medivacs moving forwards. Actually on the far left side there. Hydrogen is uh, started for Raynor. He's going to play Hydraling Bane on hard lead. Not a bad style. Clem looked really good recently against Scarlet, though, when she tried to play Heavy Hydra. All right. Overseer. Oh, what? That Widowmane fired? Really? You're kidding me. Rain is going to be annoyed at that. I'm, I'm surprised at that, and I'm commentating. Ah, Liberator on the left side. The Queens don't seem to know about it, though. Look at that. Nice siege up. The Queens were all just there. Now, did you guys notice he dumped five injects on that hatchery? This is what we call stacking injects, and you do it to create what I call a lava fountain. Oh, watch out, watch out. Marines coming in, Marines coming in. But he picks up, saves most of those Marines before the, the Banelings can hit. Liberator Siege is up over here in the flower. So basically what Rainer does is he, he's not going to keep injecting the 4th and 5th base. But when they first come up, all of his defensive queens have a lot of energy. So each one of them puts one or two injects on the hatchery. And it basically just spawns lava for the next 6 minutes without him having to actively inject. So he only needs to inject his first 3 hatcheries. But if he just once in a while dumps a ton of lava on those hatcheries, they will self-inject for the next few minutes. Lingbane Hydra coming forward. Nice Hellbat spready up front. The Banelings need to be used to clear up the Hellbats before the Lings can go in. Overseer takes a single shot from that. Cleans up the Widowmine before it can fire. Nicely done here by Rainer. But you got to be careful about chasing too far. Queens on the left are getting damage on them from the Marines and the Mines. This is a very even game so far. 82 workers for Zerg, 65 for Terran. Seems like an aggressive style. Only 65 workers for Terran. Clem is definitely... Focusing on attacking and getting momentum. Yeah, he's got a fourth command center. Yeah, he's got a second factory building as well, which uh, does seem to have itself a tech lab reactor on the main base factory. But there's still good creep spread out here. Rain has got that big work account. Hive has started, and he's remembered Groove Spines. Very important upgrade in this scenario. Marines and Widow Mines starting to move forward here on the right side. The Hydras are exposed, but they have got good range, and they gun down the Widow Mines before they can shoot. Nice engage for Rainer. Really good angling for him. Oh, and he swarms the bottom left at the same time. Very nice moves by Rainer. Takes a 20 supply lead. Clem comes in for a bit of revenge. Rainer's like, what are you doing, mate? No way. No way, Jose. Shuts him down. But wait, the Widow Mine does take out a couple of Banelings. Nice moves for Clem. Sets these ones off. Needs an Overseer on this left side. Where is that Overseer? He's morphing it now. But if Clem can move back up and defend these Widow Mines before the Overseer gets there, that'll be very successful. Clem down 25 supply. He's got a fourth command center on the way. Three more tech labs in the main. He is building workers. He's at 69. Being down 17 workers, though. Never something you're comfortable with, even as a Terran player. 2-2 two, two is on the way. Similar timings for both sides. Upgrades. Clem pushing forward on the left. It's all about the micro right now. It's all about the micro and the back and the fourth. The Baneling Morph does get caught. A few of those do go down. Rainer feels forced to engage to defend them. He takes a few nasty hits. Rainer needs to gather his units, but that means he's pulled his whole army to the left. Wait, no, he's still got some Hydras on the right, but the drop sneaks by. There's no Overlord Vision on the edges. Clem starting to utilize that very nicely as Rainer takes a couple of bad fights. He took a few really good fights before that, but now... He's down 2,000 resources in the units lost. Hydras do come in with the Lings. Nice rotation there, though. Hydra Ling will rotate. There's a Spore Crawler in position. He's got to pick up and get out of there. You do not want to lose these Medivacs. The Hydras will focus them down. One Medivac falls. The other one is also going to fall. Overextension for Clem. Right after a few good fights, Rainer fights back and gets some good trades of his own. Three Vipers, two, two upgrades. Almost finished. The Adrenal Glands did not start. Watch out for the Boom Booms. One Widowmine massive on the Zerglings. One did hit a few Marines. 
It's a lot of Hydras left over, so they are able to push him back for now. Does drag that Widow Mine away. Great micro for Raynor. Left side army, it's just Queens. Raynor does not have a force over there. And that is something he's going to need to fix up. We know Clem is going to send another force over there. It's it's the classic. I'll always remember watching Cyril playing on his stream one game against Clem. He grouped his whole army and then Clem ran in and killed a base for free. And Cyril was ranting to himself for like five minutes about how you basically never are meant to, clump, meant to clump your army in this matchup. Terran always attacks two places at once. You're meant to keep your army spread on both sides and Raynor does fix that in time. Ooh, Widow Mines are not getting any big shots off. Good defense here. I love this little Hydra Bane force on the right. Creep has been pushed back, though. I feel like Clem's keeping him contained. Clem's actually managing to put Raynor in a corner. Something very few players are ever able to do. Uh, Solar's specialty as a player is getting put in the corner and surviving and fighting back. Raynor's not bad at it. He can definitely play from here. But, oh, this is getting inefficient. The spread is so good. Dude, that was a bad trade. Because with no other supporting units, Banelings on their own off creep. The Marauders just spread out. The Marines spread out. All he did was damage a few Marauders, kill a couple of Marines, but a lot of Banelings went down. An expensive misstep for Raynor. Viper's coming forward. Parasitic Bombs are big, but look, Liberator's coming in as well. Definitely going to be a problem as time goes on. Trying to kite him into the Widow Mines. Nice micro by Clem. It's all about the back and forth and the in and out. Clem playing so bloody fast. Despite having to play six games in a row in this tournament against top tier opposition, he does get a hatchery snipe and even saves a few Marines for good measure. But Clem's supply is dropping terribly. If Raynor can counterattack and kill this planetary right now, then this is definitely a big overextension. It's five base against five base. But if Raynor grabs his whole maxed army and kills this base, I think Clem is just overextended. Right now, though, if he's given more time, this command center's finishing. Plus three weapons is ahead. He's got one plus one vehicle plating. He's got a decent Widow Mine spready. And Raynor seems to be just waiting for more units to morph. He's getting pushed into a defensive stance. And this drop going back in on the north, catching him off guard, could be massive. Raynor has not felt confident counterattacking. He doesn't know about that supply advantage. He doesn't realize that Clem's bank is so low. Widow Mine's firing on those units. The Hydra Bane rolling in. Good attack choice here for Raynor. That's a big boy choice. Gets 10 SCVs and the Planetary. He's going to keep going. Uh, a bit dangerous. A little bit dangerous. He's out of Banelings. But, oh, the Parasitic Bombs are great. And Clem has forgotten about these Marines. He could have cancelled that hatchery in the meantime. On the left, Widow Mine Drop comes in. Oh, he's looking for that Juicy Lucy. Hasn't found it just yet. But he's being a nuisance to deal with, isn't he? And he's just probably, probably going to pick that up and get out of there. Still Marines in the top side as well. Clem sends them in, clicks them on the hatchery. Plus three weapons finishing in 10 seconds. The medevac with a mind drop, dancing left, dancing right, being as irritating as it can. Trying to distract Rainer so Rainer cannot respread his creep. The hatchery will survive. Five Marines, not enough to take that out. There's still two active tumors on the right. So we've got a schlong in the right middle. No, sh no creep on the top. No creeps active there in the middle. And two, so he's got a, a double creep tumor schlong on the left, a double creep tumor schlong on the middle right. Not bad, but Rainer definitely needs to respread that and get some proper map control going. Viper's running forward, massive EMP, an immediate split of the medevac with the parasitic bomb. There's buried banelings here, but they haven't had a chance to set off just yet. Rainer has mass hydralis, but they do not have plus one range yet. Keep that in mind. It's going to be 3 2 against 0 2. Plus three carapace is almost there. These five marines are still annoying. Rainer is like, just throw your drop away, play like a human. For, for one second, can you stop saving your units to come back in two minutes later over and over and over again? If he clicked, I mean, okay, there we go. Finally, the Queens take out the Medivac and Lings will clean up the Marines, but very frustrating to deal with Clem and his incessant harassment. Clem's supply still sucks. He's still not maxed. He does have a few more orbitals now, though. He's on three orbitals. You guys know when you're like, you're pretty sure of something, so you say it, but then you check the fact as you say it, and you go, eh, maybe not. Well, he's got a fourth about to finish, so I wasn't too far off. He's got one extra orbital. It's mostly other planetaries. I guess he used one command center to replace the planetary, and Infestor's on the way right now. Raina does still have, it looks like the Burrowed Baneling went down on that turret built. Here we go. Nice parasitic bomb. Does take out of a, a medevac. Two more probably going to go down there as well, but the Widow Mines on the ramps. Every time he chases into those Widow Mines on the ramps, that goes well for Mr. Clement. Ah, the Depot's blocking him. Nicely done there. These Banelings ain't going to do jack. He's just going to take the trade on the Depots. Better than nothing. Does set that command center on fire. Clem, back to mining though. He's got a Widow Mine drop in the north. He's using that harassment very well. That Spore Crawler kind of works against Clem there for a moment. Does block his units. 
and the repair on the command center is good. It's a very close back and forth game. Rainer has traded really well, only down 3,000 resources. He's still got a big bank advantage. I think Rainer can honestly keep going, but especially if he gets an Infester up behind his opponent, he will win. Like, the Borrowed Banelings are cute, but it's the Infester that will win the game. I don't know where the Infester is. It's in the natural. It might have been a misclick. The fact that that bad boy is not on a control group tells me that Infester was not built on purpose. Banelings trying to burrow in the middle of combat. Scan sees it. Ling Bane trying to spread. The Overseer does drag some of those back into the army. You've got to be careful about those mind drags. But he does get a bunch of the bio and the ghosts. There's a few drones in the army. You can see Rainer sending these units home right now going, Get out of here, drones. I don't want you in my army. So we should see him. Oh, he hasn't noticed, actually. Double Lib Harass coming in. There's a Spore and a Queen there. No Spore Crawler on this base, though. The Lib Harass is going to be a nuisance. This is the secret to Clem's success. It's how he won Atlanta. It is the non-stop Liberator Harass. This man believes in bringing freedom to the poor Zerg more than anyone else. It is absolutely disgusting. Now, Blind and Cloud on the Planetary is nice. Baneling's trying to roll in, but I don't think he has enough to kill this. He's got to be careful! Oh, the Marines! The Marines come forward for the punish. Clem says, no, 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 you cannot kill my command center. He runs forward, but there are enough Hydras to win that fight. Plus one range has finally started for Rainer. He's been on a mass of Hydras for a long time. It does feel a little late to get that upgrade. I would have preferred plus one range, probably instead of plus three melee. Command center on the right side gets cleaned up there. The Burrowed Zergling cleared by the scan, and that does land. Seven Marine drop on the left side. Hydras are going to take that out. Clem not watching for a moment, and he does lose seven Marines in a medevac. Units lost tab still very close. Rainer is out trading Clem on his map pick. His creep schlong on the right looking very solid. He's respreading on the top right as well. Still doesn't have anything in the middle or the center left. Uh, the far left does have two creep tumors. So Rainer, even in the midst of not having many tumors, is still fighting very well. Clem is hanging on, though. He's got a lot of infrastructure. He's got a decent command center count. Four orbitals, two new command centers have just finished. He's trying to make one into an orbital, one into a planetary. Shouldn't he have killed the command center? If he did, he was going to lose every Hydralisk there because the repair was barely keeping it alive and those Marines were stimming forward. Marines do crazy damage. So it would have been a very dangerous move. I do think Rainer could have killed it, but he may have lost 15 Hydralisks if he did that. And that would not have been worth it. So don't get me wrong. The fact that Clem held onto that planetary was clutch. If he ends up winning this game, I would say that's probably a decisive moment. Because look, he's only just maxing out with no bank. Rainer has a huge army. Oh, Widowmine on the left gets a massive hit. The second one gets a massive hit. This Widowmine, not a big hit on that one. But the bio stutters back. The Liberators do get gunned down by the Hydras. Rainer instantly remaxing. We've got Medivacs flying around, being a nuisance. Looks like it's coming back from a Widowmine drop run. That Medivac does go down. Units lost tab is now 4,000 resources in favor of Clem after these last few fights. Clem is on six base. Rainer is on seven. He's running forward with the Banelings. Nice spready to limit the damage. He's got to get rid of some of these ghosts. He does get rid of one of the ghosts. Can't quite chase into the second, though. You don't want to chase too far in this sort of game. Widow Mind dropping the top right. 15 drones! Wowzers! Dirty boy. Dirty boy, Clem. Does lose the Medivac, though. But... Only four drones being rebuilt. Now, Rainer, I actually don't think needs to rebuild more than that because the bases are going to mine out of money. We're at 18 minutes. I think sitting at 75 is enough drones for Rainer. But what do you do from here? It's either burrowed infestors or it's lurkers. Or he just keeps playing the same army. But the same army, this is a momentum army. And right now, he's letting Clem take a similar base count. The, the Momentum Army is all about denying your opponent's bases, so he doesn't have as much income as you. You mine out more of the map than him, and you overwhelm him, right? But if he's got a similar base count, you can't really be affording Lingbane Hydra trades in the long term. Nice snipes on the Hydras on the left. The Bio of trying to pull back. Lingbane Hydra coming in from both sides. He's trying to flank it. He's trying to flank it with the Lings. He's got to be careful here, does Rainer. Banelings running south. So many of them. Clem getting stuck behind the minerals. Will the Banes be able to close the distance? It's a lot of Bio. Beautiful micro by Clem to get the SCVs out of dodge. The Banelings get behind the mineral line. Taking out a lot of SCVs as well. He's going to take out the command center. If he can clear this whole position, that's going to be massive. The Liberty in the back fighting like its life depends on it and indeed it does the ghost the marauders hanging on for dear life but it's broken Rainer takes out the base he will take out this liberator on the left in a moment as well no nice on siege and pullback there from mr clem but that cost Rainer so many units there's also a liberator being what we would uh, pleasantly describe as a bag of uh, d's on the left side of the map Rainer is in trouble from the counterattack. Yes, he denied a base, a lot of workers, but he has no Banelings now. And without Banelings, can he take this army? There's so many Widow Mines. There's so many Widow Mines spread throughout this army. Clem has not missed a beat. He's building six Widow Mines a minute. 
for the last 10 minutes straight. This is insane. The army supply up for Clem. The liberator positioning is amazing. Oh, dude, where's the abducts? Where's the abducts? You need to abduct the libs. He needs to abduct the libs. Missing those abducts was huge for Rainer. He was looking for the parasitic bombs, but it was, he needed to take those liberators out of siege mode. Liberating the top right, liberating on the left. The liberator harass, I'm telling you guys, the liberator harass is literally what makes Clem such a nightmare to play against. It is his one way of leveraging a low APM harassment tool against Zerg in the late game that keeps them busy, keeps them on the defense. Another Liberator in the bottom left right now. Rainer's supply is dropping. He's losing three of his most important bases of mining simultaneously. He's going for the counterattack. Parasitic bomb the Medivacs. The Medivacs getting bombed. Bam, 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 bam. Medivacs falling in droves. The command center. It's an orbital going down on the right side of the map. Oh no, the Lings are going to take it down. Rainer may be losing his mining, but he's killing Clem at the same time. Both players are taking catastrophic damage this game. Poop is hitting the fan right now, and i got to say, duck and cover, ladies and gentlemen, because this game is hectic. The Liberator in the bottom left still being a nuisance. This one's still out of range of that spore crawler. Rainer just took a massive, massive winning fight, but was it enough? He needs to get rid of these Widow Mines. They're, they're everywhere. Uh, what's the income? What's the income? Very similar income right now. Now this base, he's going to transfer workers up there. This base is still not mining. He's got to get rid of that Liberator. And this Liberator here is also being a bit of a D-bag. Spore Crawler moves down there. The moment he moves the Spore away, Clem notices. Who notices the Spore Crawler leaving? This Liberator was doing nothing for the last five minutes except denying mining. And the moment the Spore Crawler uproots and goes down to the bottom to defend, Clem immediately repositions it. Who notices that in a 22 minute game where you have been playing against Serral and Reyna nonstop for the last three hours straight? The multiple of ducks to pull the Widow Mine out of the ground. This is the funniest interaction I've seen in a while. Reyna does stop it from shooting and he will be able to resume mining in a moment, but these Widow Mine drops are nonstop. It's Widow Mine drops and Liberator harass for days. Clem bringing in the Terran harassment special and Reyna no doubt pulling at his hair in frustration and going piss off mate. I'm apologizing, guys, for my language, but you know what? Sometimes the game's deserving of some more passionate words. As long as it's exclamation and not for punctuation, I think I'll allow it for myself here. We don't need to be fully uh, G-rated or PG-13 plus for today. The command center trying to get to the bottom left side. What an epic series this has been so far. And Clem, I don't know if he's actually going to be able to win, because as these bases get back up and mining, Rainer has a lot of money. What Rainer's missing right now is gas income, and he hasn't fixed that. And I think he's been so stressed by the Liberator mine that he doesn't notice that he's not mining gas. And that's the scarier thing, because he needs to mine these and to take gases across these bases. If he doesn't do that, he's just built 14 Hydras, so he's going for 30 plus Hydras. It's going to be 36 Hydras. He's got a few Infestors in here. I'd like to see those Infestors trying to flank. He's trying to push down. He feels if he can deny this orbital, he can win the game. And he's not wrong. Watch out. Fungal Boy. Fungal Boy. Fungal Boy. But he doesn't have any Banelings. The other Infestors are a bit too far behind. Lovely EMPs and stutter step away. It was one big Fungal Boy, but the EMPs have landed. The Infestors are out of energy. And you know what? There's a lot of Hydras. Is that enough, though? There are still units here. Nice. Oh, he gets the scan on the Burrowed Infestor. Reyna can't quite find his way in. If Reyna could abduct these units, that'd be great. He abducts a bunch of ghosts to their death. Lovely maneuver there from Rainer. I'd like to see Rainer pull back and wait for energy, though. That Widow Mine gets a boom, boom. Beautiful split at the last second. In the top right, a Widow Mine waddles in, kills a bunch of drones. The drones angrily chase after it. Say, get away! Why are you so annoying? How many workers can you kill in one game? 73 drones have gone down, 67 SCVs. This is some of the highest level Terran vs. Zerg, and it comes down to this base. If Clem loses this base, he is dead in this game. This is his last income of that Liberator. Heroic 34 kill Liberator defending the base in the bottom, and the Hydra count drops. Rainer unable to break the base. His infestors went down, his lings went down, he had more income. But what's he got now? A few Vipers, a few Lings, and an Infestor that's out of juice. Hold that thought. The Ghost puts a bullet right through the eye of that Infestor, and it slumps to the ground dead. The Marauders, the Ghosts, and the Marines pulling back with the Medivacs. He re-establishes mining on the base. There are still six Orbitals, which means he can drop Mules. Only 28 SCVs, but there's only 37 Drones for Zerg, which means whenever these Mules drop and this base gets saturated... Clem will take the lead on the mining. And lead on the mining, you might think, well, so what? Rainer's been out of the mining. No, no, no. Rainer is also down 12,000 resources in the units lost. Clem's trading better, and he's about to start mining more. That could be the checkmate. Rainer, though, not going to give up easily. Goes in for the counterattack. Lings do get into this base. Widow Mine Drop gets 11 more kills in the top right. Oh, savage moves from Clem. 
This man is a disgusting widow mine bastard. I absolutely admire it. I say that with the utmost respect, but you know every Zerg watching is going, oh my god, I've never seen someone harass Rainer this effectively before. It's insane how constant the Widow Mine and the Libs are. There's another mine over here. These mines up here just fired. 12 more drones went down. Rainer is all in right now. His last Link Bane Hydra unable to break him. What a game of StarCraft. 25 and a half minutes of pure ecstasy. <laughs> And I think we can all only count ourselves so lucky for being here to witness that glory. That was a fantastic game of StarCraft. Clem, up four to three. <sighs> all right, all right, all right. What an epic victory, man. He was he was in trouble as well. Clem was trailing in that game, but he never let Raynor get as much creep spread as he could. And interestingly, that guys, that's a gas first opening. So he's going to play very aggressive here on Equilibrium. Unfortunately for him, this is a 16 hatchery, 18 gas, 17 pool for Rainer. So Rainer's actually gone for the more classic opening. If he was doing his 15 hatchery, 15 pool, uh, he takes his link speed super late, and that's going to be vulnerable. But he's not doing that. He should have a decently timed link speed. I would say about four minutes. So he'll still be a little vulnerable, assuming he goes for the quick third hatchery that he's been favoring. On the other side, though, I would imagine we're looking at quick factory into two into reactor. Two Hellions dive into the main with a Reaper. They jump up the ramp, go up in there, and then the third and fourth Hellion dive into the natural. And behind it, a very quick Liberator or Banshee. It's a very good build. It's highly aggressive, and it can work out very well. Of course, uh, he has to SCV scout, because if it was pool first and Lings were coming across, he would need to leave that Reaper at home. Equilibrium is getting thrown at Clem repeatedly. These players keep throwing it at him over and over again. Now, he threw hard lead at Rainer, and Rainer looks so good on that map. He is so close to beating Clem. I, 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 he got adrenal glands. He didn't forget that. But um, is there a big mistake Rainer made? I don't know, man. I feel like Clem just played very well. I don't think there's, like, one big simple mistake. It's just a matter of, like, you know, barely not getting the planetary that time. Um... A few the, the liberator harass maybe getting a bit more damage than it should have you could argue just just it's it's all about the details like you know you want to point to big strategy things for improvements and for noobs it, it really is the, the case and for regular gms it usually is as well you're watching a clem rainer game it's so many interactions at such high pace over such a long period of time where there's just these little incremental advantages that are gained on either side and they stack up to create an incredibly complex tapestry of why a player won or lost now we do have that link speed on the way. Are we going across? The first two aliens are going to pop out pretty fast. Not as fast as they could. Notice the starport is positioned for a very quick liberator. So it's going to be the fast liberator. Yeah, he's definitely going to dive for these first two aliens. But this is a, a super quick link speed. That's going to be ready in 23 seconds. About 342, something like that. So these aliens are not going to have long in this base pre-link speed. There's only three queens out so far. Fourth one has started, as is another overlord. And four more zerglings building. So Rainer seems to have recognized from the Reaper and Hellion timing that this is a gas first. And he's actually setting up super safe. Beautiful play. Absolutely stunning. And two Cyclones come out. Oh, that's cool. Wow, that Overlord will be a free snipe. You meant to leave it next to that pillar if you want to keep it safe. But he wanted to get more vision. And Hellions poke in. Cyclones. Come on, mate. Come on. No, wait. Clem. Clem? Oh no, Clem's a bit tired, guys. Okay, he does notice. I'm like, you can't just let a free Overlord kill go. There's no way. That's super worth it, man. He does He does turn around. He's, he's tired. He's been playing a lot of games. Rainer got to have a big break and come back. But it means Clem is hot. He's on a roll. I mean, the momentum, the belief in his abilities has to be next level. Overlord, Cow is on the pillar. This Overlord's still down here. It looks like Ling's getting ready for a run by. Stim is already on the way. No third command center just yet. Goes down at 420. 420, light him up. Alien Cyclone Reaper coming forward. That queen will take damage. No transfuse for her. But queens on the high ground should be able to defend A-OK. -okay. There's only one queen in the main, though. No spore. Rainer comes in with a Ling run by. Oh, there's an alien there. And the SCVs get pulled as well. Great micro. I don't think he lost a single uh, SCV there. No, he did not. Liberator gets itself a drone. Three drones. And look at that. That queen has to quickly run to the other side. He's too late, which means his queen has to go all the way around if it wants to deal with that. Still no spore in the main base. Oh gosh, Rain is in trubs. If he can surround the Hellions, that will get him back in a decent position. Oh man. Where, where is this spore crawler, guys? 
The queen does get shot by that liberator. This queen on the left will finally start to take it down. Oh my god. Accidentally moves a little too far forward. But the resiege a bit greedy there. Rainer does stand and take a shot. Loses an extra drone. The liberator does go down. Clem got a bit greedy. And remember, he may have done damage. A lot of damage. Tons of mining time. But his third command center is later than normal. I think it kind of evens out. I mean, I say it evens out. I look at Rainer's economy and I'm not that sure. Rainer runs away with games very quickly. I'm surprised because he had to build 18 Zerglings for safety and yet he's still got double Evo finished at 545. He's already got Placarape starting. Second and third gas on the way. His work account is a 67, about to be 70. There's a gold base. I'm worried for Clem, guys. I'm very worried for Clem. It just feels like one of these games where Rainer's start is so good and he gets so far ahead on drones that he can just kill you. No, the only argument you can make here is that, like, Rainer's so used to being ahead off his early game that sometimes he, he isn't quite as good at capitalizing off it. Whereas a guy like Dark is so used to being behind off the early game, he's amazing at the next step of the game. It, 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 my mythical Zerg for ZVT is Rainer's early game combined with, like, just Dark taking over from the eight-minute mark. I actually don't think that's stoppable. And that's no shade on Rainer, because Rainer can absolutely wreck people from eight minutes, but... Oh, watch out. He's going to go... Oh, big surround. If he can surround these Hellions... Oh no, he's all coming from one angle. Oh, the Hellion focus fire. Get out of there, get out of there. Rainer, Rainer, oh my God. Okay, he does take out a Cyclone. But man, dude, the, the Hellion focus, the, the way Clem's Hellions just stand their ground and they focus on the center of the Zerglings, you just see this big fr friggin' burning gap of Zerglings appear in the ranks. It's, it's frightening. Feel like, uh, you know? Sometimes watching Clem, I feel if he's a Warhammer player, he'd play the sister, the Sisters of Battle. Literally just wants to burn everything that looks different to, in quotation marks, purify it. He's like, oh, you looked at me wrong. I've got to purify you, man. We're just going to just gonna light a 3,000 Celsius torch to your face. No worries. Uh, we don't mind Bio coming forwards. We've got Hellbats and Marines trying to hang out. There's not many transfusers left on these queens. Where are the Banelings? Rainer's Baneling speed's very far behind. His carapace is not quite there. Neither is the plus one attack, to be fair. Nice hot pickup there. Very good hot pickup. Oh, beautiful fight. Beautiful fight for Clem. Clem's Hellbats killed so many Zerglings, as did his Widow Mines. By shoving into the mineral line, he forced Rainer to take a half-cocked engagement. And Rainer, yes, he was getting close to that position where he was about to get way ahead, but he's not there yet. And he just had to cancel. I don't know what that was that he canceled. But uh, he's got melee on the way. His plus two carapace hasn't started. He lost a lot of Zerglings. Clem pushing in very hard right now. You know, he's got that devout focus. He's got that ability to shove in with zero fear. Zero second guessing of himself. He has faith in his ability to win. Eight Marines, two Mines, and a Dream. That Dream is a lot of dead Zerg. The Zerglings do come south. The Widow Mines aren't firing. Finally, they set off. The drops are going to move to the left. At the same time, runs in the north. Rain is scrambling right now. Clem, is he actually going to be able to do this? Is he going to 2-0 Serral, 2-0 Trigger, and 3-1 Rainer as well? He's getting massive momentum in this game. Rainer's starting to fall apart at the seams. He just doesn't have the material to deal with this. He's got seven muters building. He's got five bases. He does have a purple gas and gold minerals. That is the one thing that gives me faith in Rainer right now. It keeps his income solid with the Terrans. But fourth command center is almost done. 2-2 two, two started. Eight racks on the way. The bio mine is not done yet. His focus fire on the Banelings. Disgusting. And he picks up at the last second. He says, you can take the Widow Mine hits. I'm out of here at the last second. Every single time you have to clump up to kill the Marines. But then he just picks up and leaves at the last second. And there isn't enough Mutalisks to kill the Medivacs just yet. He's trying to fight, but that means he's got no Banelings on it. On the south, the Marines are distracting. All the Queens are busy there. They can't support the north. They need to defend the south. The Mutas try to take out a Medivac, but they can't do it. Clem is all over this. He is about eight games deep into this tournament. He is playing back to back to back for three hours. He has over 400 average actions per minute. He is destroying Widow Mines, burrowing forward Marines as well. He's got a fourth command center floating out. His macro is not missing a beat. There's no missed combat shields. There's no missed upgrades here or there. Well, he does accidentally, I believe, F2 an army to the north, and it looks like a medevac finally goes down due to a mistake. Getting a little bit excited. He's got the tempo, though. He's got the army supply. Rainer will need to fight like a monster to get back into this. Seven kills from that Widow Mine. Basilisk is one of the most difficult teams to face off. But if you have the best Terran vs. Zerg player in the world, you might just be able to do it single-handedly. Clem getting in there and crushing. He's got momentum, but there's not many Widow Mines here. He's got to get back to those mines. Lings do take those two Widow Mines, but there's no spreadies going on for Rainer. 
Rain is so busy just trying to fix up everything at home. He's not doing as good micro as he normally could. He does finally push this back. He takes out some of the medevacs, but even there, Clem saves eight Marines on the high ground. A rando cyclone comes in from the bottom side. What is that? What is that? Is he playing a mono battle challenge? Clem literally just BMs Rainer by moving to an army of pure widow mine through the middle of the map. Rainer has to do a double take and go, how the hell does he have so many more widow mines? That is so many widow mines. The Marines are there, they're spreading. The widow mine production has been non-stop. He is just keeping Clem uh, Rainer on the back foot because Rainer simply cannot micro against this many widow mines. The Bailings clear up some of them. He's trying to get time for more of them, but the Marines are non-stop. It's 2-2 against 1-2. The Mutalisks have no upgrades. They are 0-0 and they cannot handle. Even with mass transfuse on the Mutalisks, it is not enough. And as he stands and fights, he falls. And all caps, GG, well played for Rainer as Clem frigging wins the series. 4-3, he denies their ability to take the point, keeps his life alive, therefore dis defeating Basilisk single-handedly. What an absolute monster. This is one of those games where I was saying I was worried about Rainer just getting too far ahead and turning this into a, a nightmare for him. I mean, what the hell? But he just, from, from like the seven minute mark, it was like the first fight just set everything else up. There's like this, this first pressure. He's only on 62 workers against 72. The game looks very even at this point. He's a little up on supply. We'll give him that. He's a little up on supply. And he hits just before the upgrades are finishing for both sides. So he's got stim shields, nothing else, but he's like, let's go. And it's four Widow Mines, six Hellions, which are going to morph now about, and like, not that many marines it's like maybe 14 marines if you count this one in the back and he's just basically sensing i have to get in because you're gonna have the gold base up and i need to do something about it i don't know if he'd scouted it yet but i think he can just assume you're gonna take the gold base i have to basically get damage done right here right now and if we watch this fight with baneling speed so far away that's one problem the other problem is because he just built a spire rainer doesn't have much gas for banelings so he only makes seven banelings and he actually needs more of them here now, I think what he probably should have done is pulled his drones back temporarily, let his hatchery tank some damage, lose an extractor, because he needs the banelings to clear the hellbats. Until the hellbats are cleared, you cannot fight this with zerglings, because the hellbats do like a big fat cone of splash damage. They do 18 damage flat. So they, they friggin' destroy against zerglings. Wait, don't they do bonus to light? Wait, do Hellbats not do any bonus damage to light, guys? Has it always been 18 flat? Pig's learning new things. Um, I guess it's just the fact that it's splash. Oh, it's plus 12 with blue flame. So blue flame adds bonus to light. Oh, okay. I, f I forgot that's the way it works. That's interesting. But yeah, basically, he kind of goes in. And look, we've got Banelings blowing up on a single Hellbat on the bottom of this fight. Oh, he blew up like four or five Banelings on that Hellbat on the bottom. Oh, that's such a problem. So yeah, all of his lings are dying here to either Hellbats, Marines, but then also Widow Mines kill a couple as well. Widow Mines get like maybe 15 kills, nothing crazy, but he saves all of his Marines and, and basically Raynor not only lost a few drones here, a few Queens, but he loses all of his Ling Bane and this is like a very, very bad fight. So I just want to show you guys the units lost before that trade. So that was 2600 versus 1500. So before that point, it's a 400 resource difference. And then at the end of that fight, when the drop picks up, after the Widow Mines are killed, it's a 600 difference. That doesn't seem that big. That doesn't seem that big between the two, which tells us that maybe the pressure earlier with that Liberator denying so much mining in the main did even more damage than we realized. Because I said, hey, the drone count's really good. Uh, but apparently going Spire, Macro Hatch, 5 base, 6 hatcheries, all this stuff at once, 1-1 one, one upgrades, Bane Speed, Spire, and losing all that mining in the main, that's that's pretty huge. That is pretty huge. Okay, so while he kept distracting him in the main base, that first fight set up so that he needs pretty much all of his units to defend up here. He doesn't have many units right now, and that may, that's why he doesn't have enough units or enough time. He's so busy scrambling to defend the main to defend the bottom, and this is huge because this is his gold base, and losing workers on the gold base is really huge. You can see that the Widow Mine's getting shots off. He's not really losing many units. And then this. And this is where the damage stacks up. Because you've got to realize drones are 50 minerals each. Every time the Lings are panicking, sprinting into a mineral line to try to save drones, 
you're usually taking a pretty bad fight. And after those two drops, we're up to from an 800 resource difference to 1800. So an extra thousand resources. Obviously, there's no APM to spread creep during this because you're so on the back foot. You're losing mining time. You're losing drones. And you're just losing so many more resources than Clem. And he just, if from there, he's like, I will just pedal to the metal, keep attacking. Great killer instinct for Clem. And I love that he played such an aggressive style in the final game and, and managed to find some really big damage. I do think we can criticize Rainer for not building a Liberator in the main. I think that's a fair criticism. I think definitely, in hindsight, he should have built a Spore Crawler for that Liberator. I think not doing that was him trying to be a little bit greedy, defend with the bare minimum. And I think it cost him a lot because this main base, he loses three drones, but then he's losing mining for four minutes 40. Until about, wow, this is such a big delay. About 5.15, that's a good 30 seconds of delayed mining and four drones. That was a pretty successful liberator. GG's. All right, guys, after some post-game analysis, we saw that Clem basically just played like an absolute monster. Um, that first fight here was really clutch. Rainer not quite having enough Banelings, being shocked by how hard he pushed in. Probably should have pulled back drones and delayed that first fight. I think if he did that, that would have been good. But Clem was in his face from the start to finish. The moment he had momentum, he punished. Beautiful play. And honestly, talk about a one-man army. 2-0 Serral. He went 1-1 with Rainer. 2-0 Trigger. And then 2-0 Rainer to finish it off. Single-handedly beating Basilisk. I don't think that's ever been done before. And I don't think it'll ever be done again. This is... A historic victory for Clem. Amazing. GG well played, dude. You've just made StarCraft history.